Okay. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the afternoon afternoon session of the planning development control. Um, I'm so sorry that we're starting later, um, but we didn't finish until quarter to two. We had a very long morning and so we just needed a, a break. So thank you for your tolerance over that matter. Um, I'm going to, I am Councillor Therese Evans, I'm the chair of the committee and I'm going to ask Dave Shaw to um, address who is here today. Dave Shaw, Senior Democratic Services Officer, just to check his title, um, and he's going to tell us do a roll call of members and then tell us which um, officers are um, with us today. So over to you, Dave. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, members. Uh, could I start with Councillor Clear? Yes, good afternoon, present. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Gordon Smith. Yes, I'm present. Councillor Laming. Good afternoon, I'm here. Good afternoon, Councillor McLean. Good afternoon. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Present. Councillor Raphael. Present. And Councillor Rutter. Present, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, could I take the opportunity to, to tell you which um, officers are with us this afternoon as well? We have Ju Julie Pinnock, Service Lead Built Environment, uh, Catherine Knight, Service Lead Legal, and the planning case officers this afternoon are for the Recreation Ground, Shedfield, Item 11, Nicola Clayton, for Item 12, Woodlands, Clewis Hill, Marge Ballinger, Item 13, land adjacent to new cottages, Carhampton, Anna Harrison. Item 14, four acres, Hambledon, Charlotte Fleming. And for item 15, tree preservation order 2289, Lansdowne House, John Bartlett. I'm David Shaw from Democratic Services, and this afternoon I'm joined by Nancy Graham, also from Democratic Services. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so we start with item 11 on our agenda, which is 20 slash 01089 slash FUL, um, Recreation Ground Sports Pavilion at Upper Church Road, Shedfield. Um, as we've heard, the case officer is Nicola Clayton. And when you're ready, um, Nicola, I see that we've got your presentation up on screen already. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. I'm introducing the planning application at Shedfield Sports Pavilion, adjoining the recreational ground, which abuts both Upper Church Road and Winchester Road. The application is for the extension and alterations of the existing pavilion. Next slide, please. The existing sports pavilion has been in situ since the 1980s and the facilities require improvement. It is also hoped that it will provide and enhance the facilities provided to better serve the community. The extent of the proposed works for the changing rooms is determined by the minimum requirements of Sports England and the Football Association. A function room is also required for both the Parish Council as a meeting room and the increase in size will allow for it to be used for other community activities and classes, for example, children's parties and, for example, and yoga classes. Next slide, please. I've taken some photographs from the recreational field showing the pavilion in its surroundings. Next slide, please. And this set of photographs shows the extent of the existing facilities within the pavilion building. A survey was undertaken by the Football Association, which highlighted the issues of the changing room layouts, which do not meet the current standards. Next slide, please. Here depicts the existing parish council meeting room, the showers and the changing rooms. Next slide, please. The drawing here shows the extent of the proposed works to increase the footprint of the building. The extension is shown here in red. Next slide, please. Here are the proposed elevations. The extension will match the existing building in terms of its appearance and remain single storey. Next slide, please. A view of the pavilion from the existing car parking area, which is, at, is accessed from a gravel track. A scat harp lies just outside of the photograph. Final slide, please. In conclusion, the development is acceptable and complies with the local plan policies. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. So we move now to the public speaking. And um, the first public speaker is an objector, Mr. Hart. Good afternoon, Mr. Hart. Hello there. Hello. Have you got your camera on? I'm afraid I don't have a working oh, web right. camera okay. on this laptop, so no. Okay, well, we can hear you. Um, anyway, you have three minutes, so if you can see the screen, there will be a clock that comes up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> but um, if not, then we will tell you when your three minutes are up. So when you're ready, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Greg Hatt and I object to this development as I have concerns that the plans do not include provision for extending the on-site parking at the REC nor address improving access to that car park. It's a fact that since the recent reconfiguration of the REC to, pro to provide two football pitches, parking and congestion issues have been introduced on Upper Church Road. On the occasions when two matches take place simultaneously, the road is often lined from top to bottom with parked cars. It's also a fact that the use of the Rex football pitches is not seasonal nor restricted to just two hours at the weekend. The Rex sometimes hosts back to back matches and evening matches are occasionally scheduled as well. I know this to be the case as someone who has previously booked the facilities at the Rec in my role as a manager of a local youth football team. I would also point out that the grassroots football is no longer seasonal as training and tournaments continue to take place throughout the summer. Additionally, in a statement from a supporter of this development, who also represents Shedfield Parish Council, it has already been acknowledged that Upper Church Road and Church Road have been full to the brim with park cars at times of weddings and funerals by users of the nearby church. One of the stated aims of the development is to attract further use of the facilities for people of the community, and I have little doubt this aim will be realised. This additional demand will further exacerbate the parking and congestion problems at sporting, as sporting events will take place more frequently. Also, this development will provide a larger function room for other community activities and classes, which introduces more scope for evening usage as well. With patrons of the local pub, guests attending events at the church and users of the Wreck and Scout Hut all competing for parking, I'm sure you can picture how busy and congested Upper Church Road can become. When the road is full of parked cars, there are no spaces for vehicles to pass, which results in private driveways being used as parking passing places. This, the increased use of online shopping has added to the problem, with delivery drivers having no choice but to block the road while they make their deliveries. It also raises potential issues for emergency vehicles accessing the area. A further problem is that vehicles often end up parking too close to the junction with Winchester Road, which makes turning into Upper Church Road dangerous. The existing red road markings and traffic signs with yellow backgrounds in place at this junction suggest it is already recognised as a hazardous area. I would think proactively taking steps to discourage drivers parking too close to this junction through providing adequate on-site parking at the REC should be encouraged. To conclude, I have first-hand experience of using sporting venues across Hampshire and neighbouring counties that have provided excellent facilities only to be let down by poor access and lack of parking. I would therefore strongly urge that these aspects are considered in the plans so that the community including the residents of Upper Church Road, have a facility and supporting infrastructure that is fit for purpose and something to be proud of. Thank you. Chair, you're muted. Oh, that's probably why I couldn't stop. <laughs> um, yes, I was muted. Anyway, thank you very much, um, Mr Hart, for coming along this afternoon. We'll now move to the one of the ward councillors. Councillor uh, sorry, Reed. Chair, I beg your pardon. Um, we have a question from Councillor Reid for the first public speaker. Right, if I could just explain um, before we get to your question, which, I, which might answer your question, Councillor Reid. The Parish Council is the applicant here and also had put their name down to be a supporter. And the, our legal advisors said that they couldn't speak twice. 
And so um, Councillor Warren is moved to be a supporter and Councillor Ogden might be available there for questions. Is that what your question was? In Councilor a word, no. <laughs> yes, well, let's have your question. No, no we'll, we'll come to that question later on. Um, Chair, um, Mr. Mr. Hart, um, welcome. With regards to parking, and I understand your concerns, do you feel there is enough, sorry, enough space to extend the parking on site without intervening on the various sport, pit, sport pitches? Um, to a limited degree, yes. I think in the um, some of the documents to do with the development, uh, it's been outlined that there's potential for extending the car park behind the pavilion, um, but I'm no expert whether that's suitable area or not. <laughs> Yeah, I must admit, I'm looking at the diagram that we're given and there doesn't look a vast amount of space, but OK, thank you very much for your time. Thank okay. you. Any further questions for Mr Hart? No further questions, Chair. Mr Hart, thank you very much for coming along today. Um, do stay with us um, and um, if you have the time to do that. Um, right, so the Parish Council representative, Councillor Linda Warren, will be speaking as a supporter now. And so now we move to the Ward Councillor, Councillor Vivian Atchwell. Afternoon, Councillor Atchwell. Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we okay. can see you. And, Great. Um, when you're ready, you have right. five. OK, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak this afternoon. Um, it's quite unusual for me to come to this committee to actually support something because I'm normally against things. But uh, currently, um, the parish council, their meeting rooms, I've, I've been there several times, obviously not, not lately, but the the area they we have our meetings in is extremely small. I believe there's 12 parish councillors and it's a very small area and also uh, for members of the public there's not a lot of space whatsoever so uh, I, I can understand the comments from uh, Mr. Mr Haight and the, the residents that have uh, are not supporting this application but um, I do feel that we, we do uh, as a, a district councillor I am in favour of this uh, extension to the sports facility the pavilion it's much needed in the area um, I think we need to encourage more sports in, in the local area. Hopefully people will try and walk there rather than bring in their cars. But I, I am slightly disappointed, disappointed that the, uh, there's no mention of extending the car park or improving the parking facilities. Now, I don't know if that's something that can be put in place. And also I was wondering, as there's lots of congest congestion on Upper Church Road at the moment, and the sight lines when you come out of um, the pavilion, whether the, some white lines could be put on Upper Church Road just to help people trying to get out of there. That, that's all my comments. Thank you very much. There could be some questions for you, Councillor Archwell. Thank you. Vice Chair, any questions for Councillor Archwell? No questions indicated, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor okay. Archwell. Thank you. Turn your camera and mic off. Now we come to the supporter. Uh, it is an application from the Parish Council. Um, so I believe how you've sorted it is that Councillor Warren is going to speak, um, but Councillor Ogden will be available with Councillor Warren to answer any questions if necessary. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so Councillor Warren, I see you're here. And Thank so you. You have three minutes when you're ready. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Linda Warren and I'm a Shedfield Parish Councillor and also the lead on this project. So I thank you for allowing me time to speak in support of the application. The whole project originally came about in response to the Winchester playing pitch strategy document. This highlighted the severe lack of provision for football pitches for younger children. We recognised that our playing fields were underutilised and have been delighted to be able to add a pitch for under 11 and 12 year olds. 
However, this threw up a problem with our changing rooms, which are seriously in need of refurbishment. Most critically, the toilets are located outside of the changing area and so, so do not provide the necessary um, safeguarding criterion for young people. In addition, the facilities are too small and have too few showers, so do not comply with current standards. It is essential that we provide appropriate facilities for the teams that use our recreation ground, particularly the youngsters. The rest of the project is about ensuring the pavilion meets the future needs of our parishioners. At present, the pavilion is used by the parish council for its meetings and also houses the offices of the parish council staff. It is a valuable asset, but is currently not being used to anywhere near the potential for the wider community. The main room is filled with tables and chairs, and as there is no storage for these items, there is very little scope to allow our parishioners to use the space for clubs and societies and social activities, or indeed as a place of refuge in any emergency. The room is presently somewhat dark and uninviting. Our plan extends the pavilion's club room and open up the front to incorporate larger windows and bifold doors. This will give us a light, bright, open space and allow us um, also to open up line of sight over the recreation ground and make it possible for social events to use both the pavilion and the grounds simultaneously. The alterations and extensions have also been designed to be more inclusive with good access for wheelchair users and the less able, together with dedicated access toilet and a baby changing facility. Once these works are done, uh, we will be able to provide a proper community facility to all our parishioners. It is hoped that improved use of the pavilion will assist in bringing the three villages closer together at a time when all three are subject to increased housing and pressure on our current provision. Thank you for your time and attention and I hope you're able to approve our application. Thank you very much um, Councillor Warren. There could be some questions for you from um, the committee. Perhaps I could start. Could I have your view um, on the parking? Mr. Hatt was sort of said there's not enough parking. Um, is it the parish council's intention to provide more parking? Yeah, we are hopeful that uh, we can accommodate more parking. At the moment, there isn't any bays laid out, so it's a little bit random. But our architect has looked at this and he, he has estimated and measured that there's room for at least 20 cars. Um, so that would improve the situation. I can answer some of the questions that were raised by Mr Hutt, if that's appropriate. Yes, if you please want to do. Yeah. OK, um, so. 20 cars is what we've estimated and um, I don't know what he means by access to car parking. Obviously the access is over our own land, so I'm not quite sure what he refers to about that. In terms of the pitches, um, it is a seasonal situation. We have um, football on the pitches from the 1st of September to the 30th of April, at which point cricket takes over. And obviously we can't accommodate cricket and football at the same time because the pitches overlap. Uh, cricket runs from 1st of May to the 31st of August um, and the, the pitches are laid out for the appropriate sports at the appropriate times. Also during the season for football um, we've put a lot of money into those pitches to improve the grounds in line with the FA recommendations um, and so we have two pitches and they are both only used twice per week. So there are a total of four matches, two on each of the pitches. Um, they tend to happen over the weekend. Um, because we don't want to overuse the pitches and therefore um, undo the good works that we've done in terms of improving the structure of those pitches, we don't allow additional games. Thank you. That's, thank you for that clarification. It's very useful. Can I clarify what I meant by access or am I not allowed um, to speak No, again? I'm afraid I can't. I can't um, okay. allow you to speak again. I'm awfully sorry. Um, so, Vice Chair, are there any other questions for Councillor Warren? Yes, we have Councillor Reid and Councillor McLean, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. You very kindly asked the question about the car parking. Um, could I just clarify? You say 20 car parks and spaces. Is that 20 additional or a maximum of 20? 
No, that's a total of 20. And that's just the, the estimate from our architect. I mean, I, I do think there potentially is room for more. I don't know how many more we would really need. I mean, 20 seems quite a lot to me in terms of the number of people attending at any one time. Yeah, and currently your car park can take how many? Currently, yes. as I say, it, it, it's not laid out, so it's it's quite random. So it just depends how people park. Fine. Um, this is a, a, a query in a sense. Um, I was rather surprised that the application came in in a councillor's name rather than the proper officer. Um, it, just, to, you know, it's nothing to do with the planning itself, but I'm just um, querying why that was done. I have no idea. I'm sorry, I didn't put the application in myself, but I am the lead on it. So that might be why the clerk at the time put my name down. I don't know. Yeah, because the clerk being the proper officer. Yeah, in my view, we, from we, my have had, we have had a change of clerk. We had a locum clerk and now we've got a permanent clerk back again. So I suspect it's because of that. Well done. I note the size of your committee room and I didn't realise you were 12 in number. Mm. You obviously don't have many, um, shall we say, contentious issues. Well, there are occasions when plenty of people do want to attend and it gets pretty cramped and pretty hot in there, I have to say. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. But just to clarify, Councillor Warren, your application is on behalf of the whole Parish Council. It is indeed. <laughs> um, Chairman, there was no question of that. What I was just asked, quite inquiring as to why it didn't come in through the proper officer route rather than okay. an individual I think, member. I think Councillor Warren explained that. Um, right, Vice Chair, are there any further questions? Yes, Chair, we had we had um, Councillor McLean and uh, I have a question as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And um, Ms. Councillor Ogden, I presume you are happy to let the questions be answered by Councillor Warren? Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. So, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me OK on this other computer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fine. I'm looking at the picture, um, page 132 of our pack. It shows a photograph of the, I guess, the front of the building in the car park. I don't know if there's a question you, you are able to answer, but um, there's a telegraph pole with some fencing around it. That is, I'm guessing it must, it must be your land. And also the green grass, the other side of those um, dragon's teeth. Is that all land that is planning to be part of the new car parking setup, or is it worth considering to add that to the land so you can take your number of cars in to over 20? Yes, I, I believe that is an option. To extend those two areas? But I, I believe so, yes. Yeah, because that would take you, looking at the size of it, would take you up to somewhere near 30 rather than 20. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so, Councillor Rutter. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, hello, Councillor Warren. I just wanted to ask about how you're going to encourage people not to bring their cars um, to your wonderful new pavilion and facilities, but to walk and to cycle. And do you have um, plans for secure cycle um, parking, that sort of thing, just, just to try and discourage people from bringing cars? And, and is there a safe walking route to the pavilion and the sports fields? Thank you. Yeah, um, we can certainly um, add some cycle provision. Uh, people do turn up on bicycles at the moment anyway. One of the thoughts that I've had is that requesting uh, the away teams potentially to arrive in a minibus rather than on individual cars. Um, as for um, encouraging people to walk or cycle or whatever, uh, that is something we do um, encourage, but obviously um, at the moment, uh, I Certainly with the, the pandemic in the last year, we also haven't been able to encourage people to car share, things like that. But that is something that we do ask. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair, do you have any further requests or questions? For no further requests, um, Chair. Thank you. So thank you very much, um, Councillor Warren and Councillor Ogden for coming in along this afternoon. If you could just turn off your microphones and your cameras 
and obviously you're going to be staying with us in the committee. But thank you for your contributions. Um, right. So Nicola, was there anything that you wanted to add in the light of the public speaking? Good afternoon, Councillor Evans. Yes, yes. Uh, um, just to clarify, I will confirm, Nicola's had to leave the meeting, yeah. um, but as her colleague and yeah. team leader, I I'm can ask any questions. I went, went on too late this morning, so I, I did think that you might appear, and here you are. Yes, <laughs> here I am. So um, just to clarify, I guess, in terms of car parking and access, we do have comments in the report from our county highways engineer um, and they offer no objection to the application in terms of access traffic and car parking um, and you can read the, the comments in the report in terms of extra land um, for car parking as you know what we're considering is the plans before us um, and we've heard that the parking area isn't laid out necessarily in parking spaces so therefore there is some scope um, to order it better arrange it better but at the moment there's no scope in this application to expand the area of, of car parking it, it is what it is in terms of the application again has no objection from the county highways engineer thank you thank you very much and just to clarify for those who are listening in to the recording um, Mr Nicholas Parker is the team leader of this um, team uh, that um, of the officers that um, which is why he's taken over from um, Mrs Clayton who already had a previous engagement but because we went on so late um, that's crossed over with her previous engagement so um, thank you Mr Parker for stepping in but you, you, you haven't come new to the application I know because you've um, been with it all the way along um right so we um now move on to questions so um i was going to take questions on anything because it's only two pages report um so i just um give people a moment to put their questions into the vice chair uh no questions indicated chair No questions? No questions, Chair. OK, so we're into debate. Uh, no, no. Oh, we have Councillor Clear for debate and Councillor Reid. Councillor Clear. Thank you, Chair. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is I will support the recommendation. Uh, to permit this application and I'm sure that when it is all finished it will prove to be a very well used good local facility and improvement of sports facilities through is a great healthy activity and it can only be good for all concerned so I do support this application chair thank you and I'm awfully sorry vice chair I didn't quite catch who else wanted to speak Sorry, Councillor Reid, Chair, thank you. Councillor Reid. Yes, guess who? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm delighted to support this application. I know what it's like to have facilities that don't meet the current standards. Even with these additions to the current building, um, it's still going to be tight to fit all the matches in um, if they run one after another, because with only two changing rooms, each team needing a changing room. If you've got four teams turning up, then you've got a little bit of a problem. So yes, I fully support the application. Um, I know we spoke a lot about parking. Parking is not part of this application, which what Nicholas has said. Um, and but it does show that there is a concern with regard to traffic issues within the parish itself. And obviously anything the parish council can do to adjust that even just by one or two more cars will be one or two less cars on the highway itself. So yes, I'm happy to support this application. 
Thank you. Um, I too um, are going to support this application. It is obviously improving um, facilities for the community and the parish council. I think it will be great for them to have um, more space and a large function room. And then we heard about the issue of the outside toilets um, not being safe for young people. Um, so that is almost a sort of an essential. And there uh, is wheelchair access and um, baby um, changing um, area. Um, and um, yes, a better layout of the car park would um, be a good idea. So I know that the parish council's architect is looking at that. I know the area really well. Um, it's, it, there's always been difficulty over parking, but there is quite a lot of parking along the road. I know that gets busy. The pub does have its own car park um, and um, there is quite a lot of parking within the site. So if they can improve the layout in the site, I think that would be good. So yes, I'm, um, I'm delighted too to support this application from the Parish Council. Any more contributions? Um, just briefly, I just wanted to, to say a word or two, if I may, Chair. Yes, of course. Just, just to absolutely support everything that other councillors have said. Um, I think every Parish Council would be um, Please, as punch to have a facility like this uh, for their communities. I just want to encourage the parish council as much as possible to to encourage people not to drive to this site from from if they're local, but to, to walk or cycle, and for them to ensure that that there are safe routes to do that, and they can work with their local district councillors to to ensure that. Um, but um, very much support support the application. Uh, Chair, we do have Councillor McLean now as well for debate. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Chair, very much. Just for picking up a little bit on uh, uh, what uh, Councillor Rutt has said. I think what has to be remembered, this is a rural community and the teams that are coming to play against the local teams will be coming from some distance. By the end of the game, they're going to be quite tired. and They're not really going to want to cycle back to Winchester or somewhere. So cars are necessary here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that being all, we'll move to the vote. You see on our update sheets um, that there's a slight rewording of condition seven. I think it's the um, middle bit before we get to the one to four that has been added in. Um, so it has to be undertaken in accordance with the approved details and shall include scale drawings illustrating and then there are the four points. Um, so um, Dave, um, this one before we do that, this application has been recommended for approval. Dave, over to you to take the vote through the councillors. Yes, thank you again. Uh, Councillor Clear? Four. Councillor Evans? Four. Councillor Gordon-Smith? I'm for. Thank you, Councillor Lamy. For. Councillor McLean. For. Councillor Reid. For. Councillor Raphael. For. Councillor Rutter. For. So that's all eight members in favour, Chair. So that um, application has been approved and good luck to the Parish Council with their plans. We now move, oh, we would we now have a very short break while we get to the um, next presentation on screen, which is item 12. Um, Councillor Clear. Present. Thank you. Councillor Evans. I'm here. Councillor Gordon Smith. Present. Councillor Laming. Present. Councillor McLean. Present. Councillor Reid. Present. Councillor Raphael. Present. And Councillor Rutter. Present. So to confirm all eight members are ready for the next item, Chair. Thank you. So the next item is item number 12 on our agenda. 20 slash 02668 slash FUL. It's the land adjacent to Woodlands, Clewers Hill, Waltham Chase. And the case officer is Marge Ballinger. 
Good afternoon, Marge. Okay, thank you, Chair. And when you're ready, we're ready to listen to your presentation. Okay, I won't repeat what you just said. The uh, land adjacent to Woodlands Dwelling is what I'm proposing for. Um, it's the erection of a self-built dwelling. It doesn't want me to advance the slide. Chair? Oh, now it's going. Oh. There we go. Chair? Chair? Councillor Evans? Sorry, Councillor Evans, you're muted. I'm muted. I was listening, but muted. Councillor Evans? Yes, just, just to explain yes. that I've just let um, the public speaker on this item, who is Alexandra Webb, into, into the meeting. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you Marge, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Over to you. Okay. Uh, this slide shows the relationship of the proposal site within the area. Clewers Hill forms the settlement boundary. North of the site where the star is, is a settlement gap and is a mixed use of the area with dwellings and established businesses. South of the site are two dwellings, including Woodlands. Woodlands is approximately here with the cursor, sorry. And then another dwelling here on the corner. And these maps show a closer view of the site in its position within the local plan part two maps. Woodlands is within the family, within the applicant's family ownership and their surrounding site is used for equestrian and grazing. So on the, here's the red edge of the proposal site and the land exceeds around to Woodlands and then the grazing equestrian to the west. A further map detail uh, shows details of the site and its surroundings. The proposal site is approximately 31 meters wide and 68 meters in length along the roadside. Adjacent to the site is an existing caravan, a stable and barred building. And a stable block along the west of the site will be removed. So this is the location of the stable block, the caravan, and this is the proposal site and this is where the existing stable block will be removed. The proposal site will utilize an existing access from Clewers Hill and create a drive into the proposal area. The dwelling is to be built with parking and turning toward its front garden and with its entrance facing toward the barn. Supplemental planning will be included to help screen the boundaries. The landscape officer has requested a more detailed landscape plan as a condition that will also satisfy the, the highway's visibility display requirement. The landscape condition will require a plan that demonstrates some partial excavation to expand the visibility slightly, while also includes some low level planting along the access. Details will be demonstrated on how much of the existing hedgerow will be retained to both sides of the site. The hedgerow hedge rows on both sides of Clures Hill are part of a group of hedges considered important for retention within the Shedfield Village design statement as the hedges contribute to the existing rural character of the area. With the loss or alteration of existing hedgerows, there would also be an impact on biodiversity. Unfortunately, I was not able to receive further comments from the Winchester's ecologist prior to today but our GIS maps and the Hampshire Biodiversity Information Center's checklist did not designate any of the proposal area for specific species protection. The proposal is for a self-built dwelling with accommodation over two floors. The design utilizes a crook frame with its curve more visible from the side elevations west and east. The dwelling measures 15.4 meters approximately along its front 14.4 meters along the sides approximately and up to 6.85 meters approximately at ridge. Uh, the dwelling has sustainability attributes in that it utilizes hay for insulation. Its frame is of composite wood with rendered walls and finished with timber cladding to the external walls and timber shingles to its roof. Again, just to uh, 
point out, this will be the front elevation that faces toward the stable and the access drive. And along the side elevations, this will be the east toward Clewers Hill, west toward the open um, grazing land, and this will be the rear elevation. The ground floor is proposed as its main living area with connections into a one bed self-contained annex built along the rear of the dwelling. The first floor will have an additional three bedrooms, facilities, and a balcony with views onto the grazing land west. So again, just to make it obvious, this will be the front entrance here. And then access through will be to the, um, toward the rear annex, the self-contained annex. And stairs will access the first, the upper floors. And the first set of photos are views from inside the site out toward Woodland's dwelling. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yes, just inside the site, looking back toward the drive toward Woodland's. The second photo is looking toward Clewers Hill and it sits below the hedgerow. For example, this is the, the access to Woodland's. There's the hedgerow and this is the a dwelling across the road from Clewers Hill. Uh, these next slides show the site as you would look through the, the proposal site. Photo three was taken from the drive of Woodlands. And there is the existing caravan in this, the distance sits right below the eaves of the barn. Photo four is, is just standing forward of the caravan, looking back toward Woodlands. <clears throat> These are more photos of within the site. Photo five shows an oak just outside the red edge of the proposal site with views beyond toward the grazing land. Just wanted to point out the oak and, and this our further views toward the equestrian and distant um, open open fields. Okay. Photo six are views along the existing hedge that will be altered for the build. As there is a slight ground level change, behind and below the hedge is the existing stable block that is to be removed. It's difficult to see this, and I do have other photos, but this is the flat line of the roof of the stable block that is to be removed. It's expected that some of this hedgerow will be uh, amended as well for the proposal site. Photo seven is a view of the existing access of the proposal site from Clewers Hill looking south. And photo eight was taken further up the existing lane looking back toward the proposal site. So again, this will be the uh, existing access that will be altered for the site. And then this is a view, if you step further back into the lane of the grazing land, looking back toward the site. I wanted to point out, this is the stable block that is to be removed. It's, it's hidden between almost two layers of, of hedgerows, but um, it's easier to see them within this photo. Photos nine through 11 are views from Clewers Hill toward the proposal site in various stages. So this is standing closer to, this is the stable building barn. I call it both. This is the one that's to be retained just for clarity. <laughs> this is the, I'll call it a barn. Uh, and the, this is a view to the existing caravan. And if you come further along on Clewers Hill and look back toward the proposal site, the oak tree is behind this tree in the foreground. And this is a longer view of the roadside along the proposal site. Photos 12 is a view from Woodlands um, from the drive looking north along the curve toward the proposal site. Uh, the entrance to the site is approximately where this red car is. Photo 13 shows the opposite direction showing the housing development across the road. So the, the residential development is across um, 
uh, Clewers Hill. I just wanted to demonstrate that not all the show photos show just hedgerows. There are some buildings in sight. Photo 14 is a view west of the existing barn with its separate access shown here. The slight slope of the land is more discernible within this photo. You can see there's a, a slight de decrease away from the proposal site. Photo 15 was taken uh, of views west of the site back toward the open grazing land west of the proposal site. And then photo 16 is just another distant view from the existing lane through to the through the grazing slot through the grazing land back to the proposal site. And just for reference, I'll point out this is the barn. This is the caravan. There's the oak tree. This is the stable block to be removed and you can just about make out a window in woodlands here in the distance. We are on 15. Okay. This is a contextual drawing that represents a view of the site with its dwelling in situ from the grazing land. Unfortunately, there were horses grazing, a couple of them, so I didn't want to disturb them. So my photo is taken at an angle. And the last slide is the contextual drawing of the site from Clewers Hill. And the photos show both directions of the site facing either north or south. And to conclude, the proposal is for a, a self-built dwelling outside the settlement boundary defined within our local plans part one and two and without justification. The personal circumstances detailed within the DNA statement and highlighted within the public comments do not outweigh our planning policies. And therefore, our refusal is recommended. The proposal would be contrary to the policies for the protection of the countryside by the provision for a residential dwelling without justification, specifically MTRA 4 from our local plan part one. The proposal is also considered to have a harmful impact to the area's semi-rural character, contrary to policy DM 23. All done. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we now we've only got one public speaker, and that is Mrs. Webb, who is the agent. And I've Jack, seen you someone here, Mrs. Webb. Last Jack, can I ask a question of March? Um, well, can you wait until we've had the public speaking? Okay. The, we do have one public speaker, perhaps it doesn't show on, on your um, update sheet, but we have one public speaker and we normally ask questions afterwards, if that's okay, Councillor Raphael. So, good afternoon, Mrs Webb. Um, good afternoon, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Great. Um, and you have five minutes, uh, sorry, three minutes to um, tell us what you'd like to, to say about this application. And when you start speaking, a clock will come on the screen. Thank and you. after three minutes, I, I will have to stop you if you're, if you're still going on by then. So we're ready when you are. Okay. Chairman, members, my name is Alexandra Webb from Southern Planning Practice. Thank you for hearing me today. I'm representing the applicant, Ms. Corin Staples, who has already contacted you to provide further background on the case. Corinne is a member of the local community and this application would provide an opportunity for her to construct a dwelling in a sustainable location for her family. Great care has been taken to create a home that would both be unique and innovative in its design and would be, it would meet the specific needs of her disabled daughter. The site, as you can see, is surrounded by development. It cannot be described as isolated and would therefore meet the overarching aims and objectives of local plan policies. The officer report does not give a true representation of the site and surroundings. There's very little to differentiate between the, the, the designated countryside and built up area along the stretch of Clewers Hill. The application should be considered in light of a recent appeal decision which allowed for a self built dwelling on land at Seven Oaks, which the case officer has failed to mention. This is a material consideration which should be afforded great weight given the proximity of this site to the application site. 
<clears throat> there would be little disruption to the visual surroundings. The proposal would not impact on the importance of the existing hedgerow to the east, as this would be retained. Therefore, the dominance of the existing trees and planting would not change. It is argued that the site can already be used in part for ancillary residential purposes to the property woodlands and the surrounding equestrian use also provides a setting and backdrop for the site. The provision of a new dwelling would not therefore result in any detrimental impact on the perceived rural tranquility. The applicant is happy to provide more detailed information in relation to trees and landscaping. Those officers and the other consultees are not objecting to the proposal. The officer has also misconstrued the advice in the MPPF in relation to self-built dwellings. Recent updates to the National Planning Practice Guidance, which goes hand in hand with the MPPF, emphasises that self-built registers are likely to be a material consideration in decisions. According to published figures to the government last month, there was a shortfall of self-built dwellings across the district and regard should be had to the current register. The proposal would provide an energy efficient and eco-friendly build that is supported by the council's own action plan for climate change. Overall, the proposal would not, would, sorry, would provide some, would provide housing for someone who wishes to remain in the village they grew up in and would not cause harm to the local area. It provides good access to local facilities and services and would only be glimpsed from Clewis Hill where built form already exists. I urge members to therefore support this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there could be some um, questions of clarification for you from the committee. Yeah. We'll just wait to see if there are any. Um, no questions indicated, Chair. Thank you. I have Councillor Raphael, but I think he has a question for the officer rather than the agent. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so thank you very much, um, Mrs. Webb, for coming along this afternoon. If you could now mute your microphone and turn your camera off. Um, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Marge, anything that you'd like to update us on, having heard Mrs. Webb's contribution? Um, no, Chair. Um, right, so over to questions. I was going to say questions on um, any part of the report. Um, <laughs> Councillor. Rafael, you'd like to answer, ask a question. I would indeed, Chair. Uh, Marge, uh, good afternoon. Could you explain to me the reason why we've got a kitchen living room and a kitchen living room together? Are you referring to the, the annex? Grand floor plan, plans. I don't have the presentation in front of me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chairman, we'll just get the presentation back up if that helps, Chair. Yeah, I think there are, it's a, a dwelling with an annex, and I think within the annex there's uh, additional um, facilities. Is that right, Mark? Yes. I'm just getting the plan up, Chair. Sorry. So I just want to make sure I'm referring to the drawing that you are. Yes, you, yes, you've got the kitchen living room and kitchen living room, and they yeah. go into each other. This is the, the ground floor annex that's proposed as part of the, the proposal. The, it has links directly into the remaining part of the house. So uh, any recommendations so that, that that can't be separated as a separate building? Well, we're recommending refusal for the entire I, proposal. I understand that. But sometimes they get passed. Chair, I think if, um, depending on your conclusions today, if you were minded to um, go against the officer recommendation and support this proposal, we could certainly discuss uh, appropriate conditions, Chair, couldn't we? Thank you, Julie. That's all I want to know. Thank you. Councillor McLean, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I put just a point of clarification, first of all. I, it was said in the presentation that it was for a disabled daughter, the flat that's shown on page, whatever it was. I haven't got a page number on it, but the extra the extra bedroom and kitchen is for the disabled daughter, so she can have some independent living. Um, if we can refer to, again, I have no page number on it for whatever reason, the map with the red star on it, site sits outside the settlement boundary. Is the presentation back page 144. 
You know, I haven't got a page number on it, or I would have quoted it. Uh, the one with the, it's a, it's a, a, a map with a, well, two maps actually side by side. That one, yeah. Um, you see, we're saying it, it stands alone in the countryside, but I can, it's, it's backed onto Provine Gardens, which I know well. Um, also, there are houses running either side of it as you go up Clewis Hill. So why does that show up as, as having to be, um, oh, I'm trying to think the word you used, I can't quote it back to you, but it's, um, it's not a standalone dwelling, there are dwellings all around it. Chairman, if I might help, what, what, what Marge is showing you here is the, the policy boundary of Waltham Chase, and this site sits outside of that, and therefore there's a presumption against new residential development in the classified countryside. There does have to be a natural edge to the countryside, um, and if there wasn't, we were just allowed dwellings around the edge of settlement boundaries. And I think uh, the presumption here is that this is contrary to policy MTRA4. It is a countryside location. The correct way to deal with uh, alterations to the policy boundary, if that's, uh, you know, if the parish or locals would like to see an, an extension of the, the policy boundary would be through the local plan share. And I know, as you probably members are aware, we're just out to consultation our strategic issues and options paper. And that would be the correct process chair, not by uh, individual planning applications. Hopefully that helps answer that question. So that the houses that, sorry, to just come again, the houses then that are already there, we've got, I've got my glasses on, it's Crossways, and then we've got Park Love, we've got another, and another one. They're already there. So they're inside or outside the settlement boundary. Is everything, everything on this settlement map um, on the left of your screen, yeah. within the blue boundary is within the policy boundary. Everything outside of that, where well, you can see here MTR, yeah, yeah. this paler green colour is countryside. And we also have up here the edge of the, the, the settlement gap as well. So everything around here and where Marge has starred this site are all in the countryside outside the policy boundary. And we, there are dwellings in the countryside, yes, yes. but there is a presumption against new residential development without, a, um, without an agricultural justification. OK, thank you. Um, thank you, Vice Chair. Any further questions on the, any of the report? No further questions indicated, Chair. Um, we have a message from Councillor Reid to say he's had to pull out because his um, iPad has crashed. So oh um, um, unfortunately, he won't be available to, to vote in this um, application. Thank you, Chair. Chairman. Thank Chairman. you very much. Yes, yes. I'm still on my, I'm still on my own iPad, but obviously the reports are on the Winchester iPad and I'm trying to get hold of either David, either David. I've got something on the screen that says jailbreak detected um, will not run and I don't know how to get out of it. I've turned the machine off. I oh, really right. don't know. So yeah. can someone get back to me from IT? Okay. Please. But in the meantime, are you going to carry on on your personal? I can't read my reports. So I, all my animations oh, on the okay. reports. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. have to drop out until I can get back. OK, well, that's a pity. Yeah. OK. OK. Well, I'm sure that message has been heard. Dave, David. Yes, so I'll, I'll take that one on. Thank and you. IP will you. contact you, no doubt. Thank you. So, sorry to lose you. Um, I think, Vice Chair, we were at the point where you said there um, are no more questions. Yes, Chair. So we're into debate. Um, I have a contribution, if that's OK. Thank you very much. Yes, I think I think we'd all um, we all feel sympathy and understanding for this family um, in that they, you know, want to build a house themselves and uh, with with a particular need in the family for a, a ground floor um, annex and so on. But unfortunately, we have a very clear policy um, we have to have boundaries within which we allow development and outside of which we don't um, without specific requirements, none of which this application meets. Um, so I'm afraid that we really cannot um, accept this application. However, as, uh, as I think uh, Mrs Pinnock mentioned earlier, we are in the process of looking at our local plan again and um, this, that is the opportunity to include perhaps if local people want to do so the other side of this road and extend the um, 
village boundary um, to allow this sort of development to take place or indeed to, to look again at MTRA4 and change the policy, um, the criteria under which we allow these developments. So that would be my recommendation to the applicants. Um, but unfortunately, uh, as our policies currently stand, uh, there's absolutely no way that I can see that we as a planning committee could approve this application. So I will be supporting the um, officer recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And uh, I totally agree with the Vice Chair, Councillor Rutter. Um, we the way to progress this application would be um, through the local plan. So I suggest to the applicants that they, they do that. Um, this is outside the settlement boundary. Wartham Chase has taken quite a chunk of development in local plan part two. So the boundary had to be set somewhere. And um, unfortunately, this is outside the settlement boundary. And you might say, oh, it's only just outside the settlement boundary. But this would set a precedent for accepting um, other areas outside the settlement boundary. So we have to have um, policies and, and rules. Um, and um, I noticed that the applicant didn't um, take any pre-application advice. And, um, and interesting as the Hoff Hoff House would be, it is unfortunately in the wrong position. Um, and we are a planning committee, not, you know, we, we don't um, give permission for personal reasons um, because those can change according to whoever owns the house. So with regret um, over the applicant's personal condition, um, I agree with the officer's decision. It's in the um, uh, outside the settlement boundary and this um, I cannot approve this application. I see that there's a hand up for you, um, Councillor McLean. We also have Councillor Laming for debate, Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I hear what you say about the uh, policy MTRA4, which is, as everybody on this committee knows, I feel is a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Um, we say that uh, MTRA4, if we go against it, we set a precedent. But of course, councillors, every application has to be viewed on its own merits, as we know. Um, the, the only question I can ask on this, because I've got no choice, very, very sadly, but to go along with the officer's recommendation, is if we could be, for the applicant's benefit, be given some idea of when the change in the, uh, uh, the plan will be finalised, so they could maybe put a note in their diary to apply after that has been done. Um, could we possibly have a date for that? I would suggest that that's not an appropriate moment to ask the planning officer. Well, for I have to say, Council, planning. I have um, to say, I don't Council, know if any officer wants to answer all that. All the way through this application. Does any officer want to answer that? Mrs. Binnick, do you want to answer that question? Okay. Sorry, Chair, I had just nipped out of the room to make sure the next officer was ready because I thought we'd um, moved on. Mr. But I think Parker have... probably heard it. Mr. Parker, do, do, do we want to direct Councillor McLean to the forward planning? I think it would be appropriate to do that outside of this meeting, to, uh, yeah. to be absolutely honest with you. That's OK. I can contact Councillor McLean. Yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nick. Um, it's just my, my fear is we've quoted to the applicant, wait until it's done. The applicant doesn't know when it's going to be done, so they can't put a planning application in. I just bet can't and horse, I think. Yeah, I understand your concern, but it's not really... I care about the person. Uh, yeah, not not really appropriate for us today, um, but I understand your concern and thank you for it. Um, Vice Chair, any further? Yes, it was Councillor Laming, Chair. Oh, thank course. you. Yes, I've got that down. Councillor Laming, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is one of these heartbreaking decisions. Um, we've got to base the decision on this on the facts in front of us, not on the per the people, and. That makes it extremely difficult. Um, we have a policy, we've implemented it before in other cases where we would have liked not to have had to do so. So I have to support uh, the recommendation on this occasion. Um, even after taking the personal circumstances into account. 
Thank you. Um, Vice Chair, is that it? Yes, Chair. So this application has been recommended for approval. And uh, Chair, for refusal. The recommendation is for refusal. Quite right. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> actually been a very long day and there's no excuse. This application. I wish you hadn't said that, Councillor Rotter. This sorry. Councillor McLean, have I you got I wish you hadn't some... said that, Councillor Rotter. Right, I'll start again. This, counts, this application, though she's correcting me and she's quite right, this application has been recommended for refusal. Um, and so if you are saying for, you are voting for refusal and the opposite. Against, then you are not voting for refusal and then we have to carry on with what reasons and so on. So this, just to reiterate, this application has been both is recommended for refusal and Dave will take us through the voting. Dave? Yes, thank you. Councillor Clear? Uh, I, four, for the, with the officer, yes. Councillor Evans? Yeah, four refusal. Councillor Gordon-Smith? Uh, I am for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Laming? Four refusal. Councillor McLean? I should abstain. Thank you. Councillor Reid is not taking part in this uh, vote. Councillor Raphael? Four. And Councillor Rutter? Four refusal. So that's um, Councillor Reid not taking part, one abstention, and the remaining six members are for refusal. Thank you, Chair. So that application has been refused for the reasons which are set out um, at the end of the conditions. Um, which is on page 141 um, and going on to page 142 as informatives. Thank you very much. I intend to take a short break now. So um, it is 22, just past 22, four. So if we could reconvene um, just after 10 to four, 10 minute break. Chair if, I could, Chair, if I could just let you know that Councillor Reid is back online, so he'll be here for the next Good. session. Good. Thank you. Yes, thank you again, Chair. Um, Councillor Clear? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Evans? I'm here. Councillor Gordon Smith? Hello, yes, I'm here. Councillor Laming? Yes, I'm here. Councillor McLean? Present. Thank you. Councillor Reid? Present. Councillor Raphael? Present. And Councillor Rutter? Present. Thank you. So we're all ready to start item 13, Chair. Thank you. So um, agenda item 13, um, SDNP slash 20 slash 03795, 03795 slash full, F-U-L. Um, this is land adjacent to New Cottages, Warnford Road, Corhampton, and the case officer is Hannah Harrison, and she's already got the map up on the screen. Good afternoon, Hannah. Good afternoon, Chair. And when you're ready, we're ready to hear your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm here to present uh, land adjacent to New Cottages, Warmford Road. The application is for change of use to Dog Training Centre. Here we have the location plan. You have the A32 running down from here, round and up here onto Corhampton Lane, and the site is mapped out in red. To go through a few site photos and um, have a map just on the corner here of the presentation to give you an idea of where the camera is and the location. Uh, so these two photographs are taken of the existing entrance that will not be changed or altered. It will remain as it is. And there's a small sign that's placed when the dog training is in session. Here are some photos of the entrance as you go further into the site. Um, as you can see, there's a generic farming 
gate um, with an extra height on there to stop people from entering when it is closed. Uh, these photos are to show you the existing car parking area and um, it's currently just grass with a very small area of membrane just as you turn in to help aid cars, cars get in and out whenever there's a heavy rainfall. Here's an image to show you the types of equipment used within the dog training centre. So we have ramps, jumps and some tunnels, all of which are not embedded into the ground and can easily be removed. So this is standing on the outside of the fenced area, but looking into the car park. This is a close up shot of what currently is fencing the area. So this is kind of a generic fence with weights is what you'd normally see on a building site. Again, nothing embedded into the ground, but can easily be removed. Here are some far views facing out from the site. There is a public right of way along the far distance. Again, looking out onto far views, the yellow line is representing the A32 as you come in from the bottom right. So this photograph, following slightly off the map, um, was taken at the butt. Bucks Head Park pub, sorry, um, and the yellow line represents the existing A32. And I don't know if you can see that arrow there. That's just pointing where the location is for the dog site. Slightly closer shot, just on the corner of the road. This is the A32 running through. Um, again, the site is just beyond these these trees just here. Slightly further up the road, um, clear views of the site, but again, for the time of year, this would be quite visible. And here's the plan of the site. So we have the entrance here, again, will, will remain untouched, but will be maintained to an order um, strict highway safety views. And we have a small area here for the parking area, which is the only form of construction that will take place for the application. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we move now to public speaking and we have no objectors. So the first one on the list is the Parish Council representative, Councillor Jerry Pett. Good afternoon, Mr Pett. I think you're muted. can't hear you anyway. No, we still can't hear you. No, we can see your lips moving, but we can't hear the sound. <laughs> I'm not too sure what to do about this. <laughs> Dave, have you uh, any Chair, Chair, could we ask Mr. Pet just to, to leave and rejoin and see if that um, makes a difference? Did, did you hear that? Could you just leave and um, come in again. So we'll just wait while he does that. Because we have to end up with a supporter. Or supporters, you know. I'm pleased to see you back, Councillor Reid. Right. No. Councillor Pat, no, we still can't hear you, unfortunately. Any more suggestions from officers as to what we can do here? Chair, I'm going hey, to. Go in. Can you hear me now? Oh, there uh, we go. Yeah, yeah. Ah, good, my, good. My, my apologies for bad, uh, <laughs> bad, <laughs> bad tech drills there. Right, well, <laughs> Please, you made it. Anyway, okay. Councillor Pett, you okay. have three minutes. Once you start speaking, a clock will come on screen and I'll have to stop you after three minutes if you're still speaking. Um, and so when you're ready, please stop. 
Thank you very much, Chair and members of the committee. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm Jerry Pett, Chair of Corhampton and Mins State Parish Council. We are very supportive of local businesses. We have several thriving in the parish. In the right location, we'd happily welcome a dog training business, but I hope you'll agree that this site is simply not right in this particularly sensitive setting. I'll focus on three key issues that we feel have either not been addressed in the report or where its conclusions are unsound. Firstly, the site lies within the Corhampton and Mealstoke Conservation Area. Policy SD15 covers development in conservation areas and sets the test that development should only be permitted where it, quote, preserves or enhances the historic interest character or appearance of the conservation area, end quote. The site is part of the historic Corhampton Park, itself on the county's register of historic parks. It was this paddock's character as part of the domestic element of the park that caused it to be included within the conservation area. The register states that, quote, though the ownership of the land has been split, the nature of pasture and parkland remains strong, end quote. We contend that all the paraphernalia of the dog training activity and its necessary fencing very obviously separates this site visually and physically from the rest of the parkland. In no way can it be said to preserve or enhance the historic interest, character or appearance of Corhampton Park. For us, it clearly fails the SD15 test. And noting the update sheet, any lighting would exacerbate its impact. If you were minded to approve, we would ask that any lighting should conform to the dark skies policy SD8 and its technical advice note. Policy SD6 covering the safeguarding of views is not addressed in the report's assessment. Uh, Footpath 29 passes through Corhampton Park, quite close to the site, contrary to your officer's description. It descends from Droxford Down towards the A32 and the Valley Floor. Very popular with both locals and visiting walking groups, it affords some of the most spectacular views in the parish. The photographs in the report are not taken from the path, but I have provided the case officer with some that are. The committee protocol prevents me from showing you these, and I hope that you might ask to see them yourselves. You will see that the proposal in no way conserves and enhances the view of this landmark historic parkland from footpath 29, and therefore fails the SD6 test. Finally, policy SD25 addresses the principle of development in the countryside. In this unallocated greenfield site, the only relevant test is that there is an essential and essential need for this countryside location within the National Park, not simply that the proposed use is an appropriate one for the countryside. We strongly contend that it is not essential for this facility to occupy this historic parkland in a conservation area in the special place that is the South Downs and therefore fails the test of SD25. Chair and committee, thank you very much for uh, giving me your attention. Thank you very much. Now, there could be some questions of clarification from the committee. So we'll just wait a few minutes for the committee to register if they wish to ask you anything. Um, I have a question, Chair. Thank you. Thank Councilor. you very much, um, Ms. Councillor Pett, um, for what you were saying. I, I was very impressed uh, at your quoting of all those uh, policy numbers. Very good. Um, for me, the, the fencing is the most unsightly part of it. It looks, it's the sort of stuff that you put around a um, um, a building site, isn't it? Um, it's not intended that that should be changed, is it? Because it's temporary and therefore can be moved away. But how long has this dog training site been in place since I believe activity started there, uh, yes, before uh, before lockdown one, yes. Yeah. It has so, been time, and it is, as you say, quite unsightly. Yes, okay. But more importantly for us, it, it puts a barrier within what was previously open parkland, or at least perceived from certainly the footpath as open parkland. Yes, yeah, so that was going to be my main question. Was was the the, the the parkland idea? So is that part of an old hand house or something? I mean, why is it perceived as parkland? Can you just express that a bit more clearly for me? Thank you. Yes, certainly. Just to the uh, if you go back to the officer's map um, in your on the in fact on the cover sheet on page one five nine. Um, you'll see that uh, what is now called Corhampton Court on the left hand side of that diagram uh, that was Corhampton House um, and it was privately owned uh, going back to I believe uh, the 17th century if not the, uh, maybe the 18th century 
and the parkland surrounding it uh, was, was attached to the house. Uh, the house was in the ownership of uh, Hampshire County Council uh, in the second half of uh, the last century and in use as a care home. Um, Hampshire sold it off in 1986, I believe it was. Um, and at the time, there were various covenants to, to uh, uh, keep the parkland linked to the house, although not in the same ownership. Um, therefore, the, the, in the, the Hampshire register of uh, parklands, it is down as Corhampton House with Corhampton Park, um, as if it were that still that 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 uh, one entity. Um, and as I uh, quoted to you from the the Register of Historic uh, Gardens, um, the 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 open aspect of that park was something that was was valued and still exists, with with the sole exception of uh, of this facility that's under your consideration today. Thank you. Thank you. That's very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more? Um, yes, Chair, we have um, a question from Councillor Reid. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good evening, Councillor. Um, the respect, restrictive covenant that is placed on this land um, has to have the consent of Hampshire County Council. Are you aware that that, that restriction has been applied for? Uh, or an easement on it, I should say. I believe um, hmm. uh, one of the, uh, the Corhampton House itself was split into three properties, one of which was recently sold. And I believe as part of that sale, um, lawyers on both sides looked into that. I don't know, to be honest, what the, the outcome of that was. Um, but my advice from the case officer was, of course, that that is a separate legal issue and not a right. planning issue as such. Yep, you're perfectly correct. Um, it was just a question I had in my mind. Thank you. Yes, yeah, certainly that, that's one we were, we were very, uh, very conscious of. Thank you. No further questions, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Pat, for coming along. Um, if Obviously, you're going to stay in the meeting, but if you could just mute your microphone and turn your camera off. Thank you. Now we come to the supporters. Um, we have Sue Norris and Mark Sennett, who is the agent. Um, you have three minutes between you. I don't mind how you split it up or who goes first or second, it's up to you. Um, and um, I can see Mr Sennett and... Yeah, if I could speak first, be very kind. Okay, I was just waiting to see, all oh, right, you want to, all oh, right, good afternoon again, um, Mr Norris. OK, and Mr. Senate, you're going to start. Once you start speaking, the clock will come on the screen and you have three minutes between you both. Right, thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Senate. I'm a planning officer, planning consultant, acting for Care the Applicant. Um, we've obviously heard the comments made in respect of the Parish Council and, and the issues appear to focus on views from the surrounding area. We know the site's in a conservation area. Um, however, Hannah's presentation made it very clear that all the all the, all the items on site are, are movable, not fixed to the ground, and um, can easily be stored away in terms of the um, the, the items used by the dogs. Um, the site is private land, so it doesn't have public access. So any views of the site are actually from from a distance, and Hannah's photographs showed. Um, images of the site from the public domain and, and I think you'll agree that the, the, the views were from a, from a long way away and, and it's very very difficult to sort of identify the site. Um, with respect to the Harris fencing, it, this is a temporary uh, fencing solution and I think the applicants have been using that at waiting planning percent is very happy to accept the condition um, in respect of providing um, more appropriate fencing and I think you'll note from the first photograph that Hannah showed from the side looking to the wider area, I think you can see a, another fence in the distance and, and that might be more fencing. Um, the other point that's been raised first to lighting, there's no proposals for lighting on site, that's not intention and um, activities carry out are carried out during daylight hours rather than at night time. Um, we note from your report there are no objections in terms of noise or from highways or from, from anyone really 
um, and, and acceptable to proposals are acceptable in policy terms. So it'd be very kind if you could, could support the proposals. Mrs Norris. OK, uh, my name is Sue Norris and I am the owner of the land. Given that it is no longer suitable for horses due to the large poisonous sycamore trees, when we heard that scallywags were looking to relocate, it appeared an ideal location for this locally run, low impact enterprise. It also appeared to meet the local plan pertaining to sustainable economic development specifically to use the National Park's superb landscape to enhance people's quality of life and attract new business. The site is separated from the village by the A32 and the constant rumble of heavy traffic negates any occasional barking which may occur. Other than this, the site maintains a lovely sense of open space which is appreciated by all who attend, both locally and further afield. The dog agility equipment is akin to horse jumps seen in many fields locally, but could be clearly screened if required. If you'd like to finish up with one last sentence. Mr. One last sentence is, <laughs> any dog excrement is removed from the site and disposed of appropriately. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Um, <laughs> but we could have some questions for you from the committee. Just wait a few minutes. Could I ask um, about number of dogs on site. Now, I see in our report that um, there have been in the group sessions or one to one there have been no more than 10 dogs maximum. Is that correct? Is the 10 dogs the maximum on site or? If I could try and answer that question and um, the, the, the facility runs during the week and, and there's a couple of dogs I think uh, one or two dogs for individual sessions. Um, so there's no there's no meaningful activity during the week. The weekends, the group sessions, and as I understand it, the first session in the morning is is the train of puppies, and they're up to thirty then. And then subsequent um, meetings are, are less than that. They cascade back. Right, um, and um, is there a limit to the amount of time that dogs remain on site? Well, I think I, I, I think we'll have to clarify on the number of um, how long the, the meeting is. I think it's in my report. It's about an hour, an hour or so, um, but they're staggered for so they're separated by 30 minutes. So that allows for vehicles to leave the site and then for the next session of vehicles to turn up. Uh, the applicant has um, volunteers that assist in the process. So it's all, it's all done very efficiently. Thank you. So sorry to go on about dogs, but the, 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 they are the sort of main use of it of the site. So will it be used for people who wish to walk their dogs or just for dog training? No, it's for it's specifically for the training of dogs. OK, OK, thank you. And then I have a question about the materials for the car park, which haven't yet been specified. Right. Um, we're, we're looking to provide scalpings um, for the car park, so it provides a sort of surface for the vehicles to park on, but also allows permeability through below. So it's not, it's not a tarmac it's a car park. It's, it's, no, it's, because you are in the national park and it does have to blend in. Yeah. But you've taken that on board, I can yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's that's my questions, um, Vice Chair. Yes, we have um, Councillor McLean, Councillor Raphael, and I have a, oh, Councillor Reid, and I have a question as well, Chair. Thank you. Right. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a question for, I don't know who would prefer to answer it really, Mr. Senate or Sue. Um, I noticed the application is retrospective, and yet you've obviously, you're talking to consultants, and I heard the word lawyers mentioned earlier. Um, did nobody advise you that you should have come forward with a, a planning application at the time you you, uh, you started this? I wonder if you could respond to that for me. Can I speak on this? I did actually make inquiries right at the start and I still have a voicemail, um, but I'm not sure who it's from in hindsight, which department. I've got the person's name and it said so long as we weren't having dogs on site overnight, there was no problem to be seen. And there was nothing specific on the website about, you know, planning permission for dogs. 
Right. Well, I find that surprising. Yeah. So do I. So do I. It's um. It's a, it's a strange one. I'd love to know, be enough to know who it was from. And I, and I do applaud dog training. So um, carry on. <laughs> you need permission. That's why you're here today. But anyway, we can't do anything about that. We're talking about the past. Was that it, Councillor McLean? It was, Chair. Thank you. So, Councillor Rafael. Uh, my question for the officer, Chair. Oh right, okay. We'll come to that in a minute then. And Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. Um, the scalpings which are going to be used, how are you going to ensure that they are retained within a certain area? What edging are you liable to be using? Um, a bit, the, the site, so the car park is set well away from the road, so they'll be contained within the site. Um, I'm, I, 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 I think the idea is to dig a sort of shallow, um, shallow bit of excavation and contain the um, scalpins in that area. I've not had discussions with the applicants in respect of um, whether there be curb stones or anything like that involved to, to retain them, but also we can look at that in detail. Yeah, um, only from experience, scalpins wander. Yeah. Um, a log edging would be possibly more in keeping. Yeah, that's, 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 I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Then Councillor Rutter. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is about the um, the fencing. I I can't I'm, I can't remember where it is in the report. If it is in the report, whether or not you're going to you have planned to replace the existing temporary fencing, which, as I mentioned before, I think is very unsightly. Do you have plans to replace the fencing? And if so, what what with, please? Definitely. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Definitely, if there was approval, the temporary fencing would be replaced by permanent fencing. And it has been suggested that deer netting would not be visible at all from hardly within the field, let alone outside the field. Um, it's to make sure that the dogs are safely contained, obviously, because with the A32 adjacent, you don't want dogs getting out and onto the main road. So yes, absolutely, yeah. You know, the fencing would definitely be replaced. It's always been temporary. Thank you. Thank you. And so, do we have any further questions? No further questions for for the applicants, Chair. Thank you. So, Mrs. Norris and Mr. Senate, thank you very much for coming along this afternoon. Obviously, you're going to stay in the meeting, but if you could just turn off your camera and mute your microphone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you. So, Hannah, anything you'd like to pick up from um, the public speakers? Um, other than the fact that I can read a section from the design and access statement to obviously clarify the kind of times and how often the site will be used, but it's whether you think it'd be useful. Or do you think Mr. Senate's obviously clarified that for you? Um, is it a short paragraph? I can make it a short paragraph. Oh, just, just give us the outline of um, the use of the site. So the average use of the site will be about 40 to 40, 45 to 50 minutes length of a session. And then there's a 15 minute gap between each session to allow people to arrive and leave the site safely. Thank you. And is there a need um, for this? I think I heard from somewhere, but it might not be for this application, that they are fully booked. I, I don't know if they're actually fully booked personally, but um, they're obviously very, very popular because they are they are very much still in use. I do drive past it on a daily basis and I've never seen the site in use, but I have seen it on my way into the offices here. So it, it is used. Yes. Which you know, points out that it is very visible, isn't it, from the A32? That's what I felt when I went, went there. OK, thank you. So we're going to members' questions now. Um, these um, start on page 167, and I'm going to take all of them because really it's just a two-page report. We have Councillor Rafael with a question, Chair. Oh, of course we do, yes. Councillor Rafael. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, the uh, Councillor Pett said that uh, he had some photographs of the footprint, uh, foot path uh, that he gave to the officer. Can we see those photographs, please? Yeah, that would be good to see. Anna, can you 
show us where the footpath is on the presentation, Mark. Um, yes, if you hold on one moment. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Let me go up the top. Yes, please. Sorry, Chair, having some technical difficulties. Hold on. Wait, we dropped it out of the presentation. Oh, it's a bit sensitive. I'm going to put it back up. the images exactly from um, Councillor Pett but the area that he's talking so this is the A32 here and the public right of way runs along the exact same line and then comes along this field here. So that's this side of the the field side of the A32? Yes so we're looking towards the public right of way shall we say so the obviously the dog yeah. centre behind me but as, as you are aware when you visited it is very visible from that public right of way as it is from the A32 on that corner. Yes, yes. Okay, Councillor Raphael. Thank you Chair. They're, they're not the photographs that Councillor Pett made though, are they? Took there, are they? No Chairman, I'm afraid that um, Councillor Pett didn't send his photographs in in time. They had to be submitted by last Thursday for us to be able to have them available for today etc so they, they they weren't available I'm afraid. Thank you Julie. Thank you. Um, so Vice Chair any other questions? No other questions indicated Chair thank you. Could I, I ask a question on the conditions? Um, we, we heard that um, the fencing is to be replaced and that the, the um, car park material has still to be chosen. And although it's just scalpels, it is quite important because, because of the visibility. It's in the National Park and it's very visible from the, the public um, realm. Um, so would it be appropriate to put some sort of condition in that these materials have to be discussed with officers before being installed? Obviously, the fencing has to be for the security of the dogs um, and presumably members of the public. But um, you know, there is a worry over the um, what materials might be used for the car parking. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I do agree this will be a condition that we can put on there afterwards. Um, the, de the deer fencing in particular, obviously, we need to certainly clarify this because that will probably be more visible than the car park itself. Um, so do do I need I need officer advice here? Um, do I need to ask the committee should it be approved that we will condition the um, use of materials, the fencing and car parking? Julie. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I was listening to that, and as probably much like everyone else, made a few notes there. I certainly thought there seemed to be two additional conditions that we need, and one of those is details of the replacement fencing. Uh, to be submitted to and approved by us uh, and I think we'll have a chat if members are minded to agree this with with the agent afterwards to agree a suitable time frame it's obviously retrospective so I think we would want to you know uh, give a reasonable period for that information to be submitted to and approved by us and then another period for implementation particularly given it's retrospective so if members were minded to uh, approve this scheme today I, I think that is an appropriate condition and the other one is, yeah, as you say, we could ask again similarly for details of that scalping material and its position, you know, and, and measures to sort of uh, ensure it doesn't sort of move the mic too far. And therefore, um, that's another condition I think with, with members' permission we should add. So, members, um, I'm really asking you before we've had the vote, 
but the vote will be um, perhaps with these two extra conditions. Is there anybody objecting to putting a condition over the fencing and the scalpel material to be con um, discussed with officers before being installed and also the time frame that we would expect that to happen? I would support those conditions, Chair. Thank you. Me too. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. OK, so if we vote to approve it, those two conditions um, would be put in. Um, there is another question, Chair, I beg your yeah, pardon, um, from Councillor Reid. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. Just draw attention. I'm, I'm getting a little confused as to what's in the report in one place is different to what's in place in another. It, it indicates that the officer has carried out a site visit and notes within their consultation room response. Yeah, there we go. No, that is sufficient highway. Uh, a condition should be placed on a decision notice to ensure the visibility displays remain sufficient for reason of highway safety. On the plan on page 188, it says 45, 45 meter visibility display assumed. So is this not being checked? Councillor Reid, really, um, on page 177, or... you will see you're coming out of that site onto the main highway at an angle of about 35 degrees. And you have to look over your shoulder if you're turning left. Councillor Reid, if I could just say, um, the highways officer have actually been out to obviously assess the, the site and the application and obviously seeing what's currently there and has had a look at the application to which they stated that they don't need to widen the access other than to maintain the existing hedgerow around it to ensure that the visibility displays are still remain and that's where we've conditioned it on the uh, condition four so it remains as it is for highway safety. But the plan says assumed so the plan is wrong then is that correct? Chair, I think what we say is that, that that's the highway, Hampshire Highways Authority have assessed it. I would have presumed they measured it out with a wheel or paced it and they're satisfied that those displays can be achieved. And the condition requires that chair. So uh, whether they say assumed or not, we've made an assessment uh, based on a consultation with our statutory council team and they are satisfied. Yeah, uh, OK, Chair, I accept that. Um, I just get concerned when I look at the photograph on 177 that if you're going to turn left, you've literally got to look over your right shoulder in order to see the road. But if Hampshire is saying it's fine, they're the ones that will take the brunt of it. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Reid, if it helps, um, when, when I went to the site, I didn't obviously go in, but I pulled off the road um, on, on page 177, I pulled into that and then um, there was so little traffic I am um, backed out I know I shouldn't have done that um, but I didn't turn um, unless I turned right but it is actually quite a wide road there um, and there is quite good visibility because the vegetation is set back. Only if you're turning left I think where the problem will occur. Yeah yeah because it's, um, it's a wide road. As, as you say Hampshire has country. looked at it and doesn't find yeah. it. Yeah I agree. Councillor, um, Councillor Rutter, any more um, questions? No further questions, Chair, thank you. So we're moving into debate. I think I'll kick things off, shall I, Chair? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did find the, the, um, the the site the unsightly fencing very worrying. I think I think putting in deer fencing or whatever our officers consider appropriate will help. I think it's a shame that the parkland feel of this area is being lost, um, as the parish councillor explained. Um, but I think that that's rather inevitable, given that the county council sold off the land and then it's gone off in pieces and so on it is going to change and the world evolves and dog training and and safe places to train your dogs in the outdoors is definitely something that, that we've all been looking for this year so i i quite understand the need 
for this facility. Um, I hope that we see plenty of enhanced biodiversity as a, as a result of this, and that's one of the conditions. Um, and as I say, I think if the fencing can be replaced with something much less unsightly, then I'd be very grateful. Um, but I shall be um, supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you. And Chair, we have um, for debate, we have Councillor Laming and then Councillor Reid. Councillor Laming. Thank you, Chair. I go along with uh, what Councillor Rutter said. Um, I do get quite annoyed with these retrospective planning permissions. Um, but we're in a place now where we've got to look at this particular one. Um, I think it's a facility that is well needed in various parts of the countryside. Um, so I think I will be supporting the uh, officer in this particular case. But I would like to point out that I do like the uh, way of putting the map on next to the photograph showing where it's been taken uh, and the location of the camera. I thought it was a very good move. Thank you. Um, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. It's an interesting application. Um, I believe from a previous application on a nearby site, still part of the uh, former estate, um, I think it's the fishing ponds just to the south. Um, we were told that it's an old hunting lodge, I believe King John, um, it goes back to. So it's got a lot of history, whichever way you look at it. Um, I believe that it doesn't meet SD6, which is safeguarding the views. Once you start subdividing land, which is supposed to be an open visual appearance, um, a parkland effect, if you start putting fences up, it tends to, well, go away from that um, particular uh, SD. And also, I don't think it meets SD25, um, again, because of its location. Um, I'm having difficulty. I think there's too many bits and pieces which are not wound up properly, in my view. Um, I will listen to what other members have to say before making my mind up. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair, any further contributions? Uh, Councillor Lawrence, Chair. Lawrence Raffel, I beg his pardon, thank oh, you. I'm just trying to think who that was. Councillor I've been Raffel. called many things, don't <laughs> worry about it, <laughs> Vice Chair. Um, I also agree with what Councillor Reid said. Policy SD6 says it would not preserve the, the <coughs> integrity and identity of the scenic quality of the parkland, which it was. And it also doesn't um, agree to SD15 of the conservation area, so I shall not be voting for this either. Thank you. Any more contributions, Vice Chair? And no more contributions indicated, Chair. Um, right, I'm going to give my opinion. Um, I, I am very concerned about the South Sands National Park Park Rangers comments. I know they're only informal comments. And um, the line that jars is there's nothing which promotes biodiversity. Now, I know that we've asked for um, a biodiversity enhancement plan. I am going to vote for it, but it is marginal for me. Um, but I do hope that the biodiversity enhancement plan actually improves the biodiversity of the site. Obviously, it used to be richer than when it was just a sort of scrap of land which has been sold off. And I would like to see, um, you know, it enhanced for wildlife. Um, and this has got to be done within two months, um, which I agree with. But I am concerned about that. We've tried to look at the other um, issues that the South South National Park have raised. So we are going to ask about materials um, and get those agreed and then um, we're going to ask about the fence as well. Um, it is the other side of the, the road and it is visible um, and it is all the colours of the dog 
agility equipment that makes it visible. But I suppose, you know, that's sort of the way it has to be. So I do have some, quite a few reservations, but um, I, I hope it's going to be a well-run site. I'm sure it is. And that um, it will um, allow the people who use that field to enjoy the um, biodiversity and the landscape of the National Park. Because it is a beautiful area there. So I will, um, on balance, vote for approval. Chair, we have Councillor McLean um, indicating for debate. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't like retrospective applications, as everybody knows, but um, the big thing with this application is it, it will be teaching dogs how to behave. Um, there is an awful lot of fuss at the moment with badly behaved dogs roaming the countryside and roaming the towns. Um, the more people that can go through a training course like this, um, the better a better place the world will be, I think. But um, I also um, believe that we've got to make sure the materials used are correct, done very quickly and are enforced if they're not. Um, as far as the scalpings are concerned, similar thing, but the death cars park on it. Um, the one thing I don't want to see is um, small stones getting dragged out onto the highway um, because the stones are too small. So that needs to be thought about very carefully. But um, I will be voting for it, but like Councillor Evans, I think um, with some some reticence, but I can see more pluses than minuses. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it, uh, Vice Chair? Yes, that's it, Chair. Thank you. So this um, application has been recommended for approval and the conditions are set out on page 170 and we are adding two more conditions on one about the type of fencing to be used and one about the treatment of the car park for the colour, I think, is the main concern. And also the time frame when these have to be installed by, given that it's currently in use. Chair, um, can I just yes. ask what the time scale is? I didn't hear that in the well, conversation. We haven't established, but I, I presume that um, Mrs Pinnock was, were you talking about two months? I don't know. Did I hear that wrongly? whatever's reasonable but urgent to um, put in. Yeah. I, I, I didn't actually specify a time because I, I thought that was something I needed to talk to the applicant about, not to give yes. them blanche, but actually to sort of talk about what is a reasonable time frame. I think Hannah has updated the two conditions from her report, conditions five and six, about the time frame to submit the bio um, diversity enhancement plan being two months to submit it within two months and then implement it with two months. And I do think that's a reasonable time frame, given that this is uh, I'm going to say retrospective, but also given that this use is an activity. But I equally think it's probably going to take a little bit longer to agree a strategy for replacement fencing and then to, to get contractors to do that and, and the car park. And so I, I wasn't so sure that a two month plus two month was we could set ourselves up to put that in a condition and then they would fail immediately so i do think there's probably a little bit more leeway we need there and i mean i was thinking and i, I you know i'll take the committee's view on this but probably three to six months to submit and approve the details and another six months thereafter to sort of get those operational but you know we could i mean i'm not you know going to go off and talk to the applicant and, and give them carte blanche i want to tie that down but i used to also need to be reasonable don't we because you know we've got to get they've got to get contractors here to do some of this works, Chair. So it's a bit of a combination of those, if that's all OK with them. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think we will leave it in your capable hands. Is is that OK, Councillor McLean? That's fine, thank you. And then somebody mentioned about the lighting and of course it will be um, in accordance with the South Downs Dark Skies policy. Is that correct, um, Hannah or Julie? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I've switched on, haven't I, Jeff? Yeah, I think Hannah and I were talking. I don't think there's any intention for lighting, actually, but the condition, no. should any lighting be uh, intended, then we would first need to see those details and agree that strategy. And of course, yeah. that would be in accordance with the National Parks Dark Sky Reserves uh, and Dark Sky. So the applicant, dark sorry, did the applicant um, sorry, the applicant said there would be no lighting needed or, or carried out on the side. That's correct, Chair. But equally, the condition then, it, 
what we find is people, you know, there may well be some very low sort of pathway lighting or something else, and this just condition allows that uh, without needing to come back with a full application. But again, it would be very light touch, very uh, only if needed, uh, and in accordance with the South Downs dark skies uh, night policy. So back to where we were. Um, so we're back to the conditions on page 117 with the addition of two, which we've already agreed as a committee, and then the informatives are on page 171. So this application has been recommended for approval, and um, Dave will take us through the committee's um, decisions as to how they're going to vote. Thank you again, Chair. Councillor Clear. Four. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Gordon Smith. Four. Councillor Laming. Four. Councillor McLean. Four. Councillor Reid. Against. Councillor Raphael. Against. And Councillor Rutter. Four. So thank you. That's six, four, and two against. Thank you. So that application has been approved. Um, so we are moving on to the next um, application and we will be um, just taking a short break while the presentation is put up on screen. Yes, yes of course. Um, we're, if we're ready for item 14. Yep. Councillor, Councillor Clear. Yes, I'm still sitting here. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Yes, I am too. Councillor Gordon Smith. Yes, I'm present. Councillor Laming. Yes, I'm here. Councillor McLean. Uh, yes, as well. Thank you. Councillor Reid. I still here. Councillor Raphael. Present. And Councillor Rutter. Present. Thank you. That's all eight members ready for item 14. Chair. Thank you. Um, so we're just about to start. Could I just check that everyone's got their microphones muted? because I can see they're not. Um, right. Agenda item 14. Um, this is SBNP slash 20 slash 04955 slash full FUL. This is change of use of equestrian land to sui generis for secure dog walking and family picnic stroke recreation site, conversion of existing stable to shelter stroke stall, plus access alterations and parking. And it is at four acres, Ham Hill Lane, Hambledon. The case officer is Charlotte Fleming. Good afternoon, Charlotte. Good afternoon, Chair. And when you're ready, we're ready to hear your presentation. Thank you, Chair. Afternoon, Committee. I have a brief verbal update before I start. Environmental Health have recently responded with potential concerns over noise. However, it's considered that this can be mitigated by amending the hours and a noise report, and the applicant is happy with this. Sorry, could you just noise report and? Amending the hours. Of okay. operation. The yeah, so we'll come to that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, this application is for the change of use of four acres field from equestrian to sui generis for secure dog walking and a family picnic recreation site. This includes conversion of the existing stables and reopening the second entrance to the field for access and parking. Permitted development in terms of a gravel path, fencing and hedge maintenance have already been carried out and don't require plan permission. For reference, the applicant has an almost identical site, Hocross Fields, located 350 metres to the west. So the red site on the screen is the application site and the blue site sort of to the left of the picture up here, I don't know really if you can see my mouse, is where Hocross Fields is and the applicant lives next door. The site is approximately 450 metres west of Hambledon Village. There's a footpath in the northeast corner and a sink in ancient woodland. There's a the murder stone, which is a listed stone here. Um, the closest neighbour is Homelands, 
which is to the south here below the polytunnels. And from the boundary of the red line to their building here, which I think is their garage, is approximately 42 metres. Um, the stables existing on the site are here, um, which was subject to a 2020, 2018 application. Uh, there are two access points on the site. There's the one that's existing here um, to the right, and then to the north is also existing, but as being used as the main ac access or proposed to be the main access going forwards with the one on the right being stopped up. Um, this is the existing site, um, so I'm sort of standing adjacent to the property or the boundary with Highfields Farm and their field, um, looking back towards the stables. Uh, this before fencing was put in. This is the site plan, so no alterations are being made physically, which require plan permission. Um, the access here is being shut up and that's controlled by a condition. The stables is existing. They're proposing to reopen this access and they've got a parking area in here and a footpath, a gravel track along here to provide access for wheelchairs to the shelter over here. Um, so this is the stable block at the top before any sort of permitted development was carried out. So it was a bit muddy and run down and they've just put gravel down. That's what they've done to make it more secure and not as flooded and muddy and everything. So members of the public have a dry space to stand. It's all permeable gravel, gravel so plan permission wasn't required for this. So this is the existing access on the southeast next to the stable block. Um, they've, the applicant's chosen to close this access up because they prefer the other access for visibility and highways are happy with this. Um, this is the other access. So the left hand photos are when I visited at pre-app stage. Um, the gate is there and you could get through but it was a bit overgrown. The right hand photo is as it is now since work permitted development works have taken place. Um, you can see the tree is still in the corner of this picture. Um, for anyone who can't see the slides, the photo on the right has been altered um, since it was put on the report, um, but it's still of the new gate or the amended entrance. So there's a tree on the left of the hedgerow um, and the access gate, which you can also see here, which has been retained and you can see bits of the fencing and the gravel behind. So this is looking up the road towards Hocross Fields and then yes this is the proposed access <coughs> where they've been using to um, do the permitted work to the gravel. So this is the hedgerow and fencing so the photo in the middle is the fencing on the sister site up the road with some dogs so it's like deer stock fencing and post and rail posts. Um, the hedgerow was overgrown in the top left photo um, and it hadn't been maintained for about 12 years. The applicant in agreement with Ecology has heavily pruned it, as you can see in the bottom photos, um, and but that's fine and it will help. Ecologies agree this will help with the regrowth. Um, the whole site is surrounded by hedgerow and I've put a condition on for its retention at two metres high. The, this didn't need plan permission, but just because there's been questions about it. Uh, again, this is the path. So the path is gravel and it goes around the top corner of the site and you can sort of see it through um, the fencing here as well from the road and through the hedgerow, but the hedgerow will grow up and thick, be thickened and cover that. Um, this is the sister site, Ho Cross Fields, um, up the 450, 350 metres up the road. It's open seven days a week, but not on bank holidays. Um, the applicant has said that they will vet potential clients twice on this site before for their behaviour, particularly the dogs, um, before allowing them to use four acres. Um, this is the access plan. So there's visibility displays and the head trimmed hedgerow, which has just been trimmed, not removed. Highways have no concerns over that. And this is just concludes my presentation. This shows 
a refresher of the site plan and my officer's recommendation is to approve subject to conditions set out in the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. When we move into public speaking. We only have one public speaker who is a supporter, Mr Paul Campbell. Good afternoon again, Mr Campbell. Hello, thank you, Chair. And um, when you start speaking, you'll see that the clock comes onto the screen and you have three minutes. Um, if you're still talking at the end of three minutes, then I'm afraid I have to stop you. Um, Chair, I've listened to your last five presentations over the last five months, so I don't okay. feel very well. Great, thank you. And so you when you're ready. Thank um, you very much. Thank you, Charlotte. Please do rattle through the slides. You've covered it very well already. Um, my name is Paul Campbell. I'm the applicant. Thank you all very much for your time and day today. Um, well, eight months ago, we decided to rescue this field from its current state as we thought it wasn't necessarily appropriate for what we wanted in the area. It was subdivided into eight different lots, divided by orange electrical tape, um, which separated the horses. We have now completely opened back up the whole field. There is zero infrastructure required, apart from some small agility equipment, which we'll be putting in. But um, we are happy to take conditions. My current plan at the moment is to use FB source wood, as we have done with the fencing, and to paint that a, a relevant or sympathetic green so it merges into the background so it can't be seen. You'll see from the middle picture here that we've also allowed 1.2 metres behind all the fencing for wildlife to move around the park. We're also putting in exit and entry points between 50 and 80 metres around the whole perimeter so wildlife can pass through. We will also be allocating just over half an acre of ground to be grown to a significant length so wildlife will also have a place to stay. That also includes so far to date over 200 beach hedges that have been planted with 100 more in the next planting season. Five trees, a number of shrubs, etc. Um, up until this moment, six or seven months ago, we have fastidiously followed every single letter of the law in terms of process from pre planning to planning. And um, there has been some adverse reactions to the, the field since we have tried very, very hard to ensure that we can educate people as much as we possibly can. The, the, the passion around the objections appears to have died away. And um, so we that was a lesson learned for us, actually, that maybe we should have done a bit of a better local education program that, with people that were interested in, in understanding what it actually was. Um, moving on to, yes, see, seeded wildflowers. We have also incorporated a wildlife fund in the back end of, of the field which is completely now covered in wildflowers, planted, I might add, not actually grown yet. Um, and we, will, we think that really adds to a nice visual element to, to the whole park itself. I think even the most ardent objector would really struggle to see how this has not been a significant improvement. We are happy um, to take as much direction from this committee as possible. We just want to share this park with as many people as possible. We believe that actually we're doing something really good here. We've enhanced the action field itself and believe it's in a far better condition now than it was before. Thank you very much, Dee, for all your time. Thank you very much, Mr Campbell. Um, very impressive biodiversity uh, contribution. Thank there. you. Um, could I, I, I just start the questions off to you? Um, it says our condition five will be that no more than two households shall be dog walking or training at any one time. Absolutely. So pres presumably you keep a log. Do we, you we do. The initial, initial entry into a booking is via Facebook page and we also pay for an acuity booking system, which is all GDPR compliant. We have the address, name and details of all users of the park. They must sign off a series of terms and conditions before they arrive. They have two opportunities. If they're doing something wrong, for instance, if they had a loud dog, they would be invited not to return because it's not necessarily the right place for them because we have to be sympathetic to where we are and what we are. Thank you. And um, another question about the fencing. Certainly. So I, I, you told us that you'd left a little gap in <coughs> two fences yes. for wildlife to move around. 
but can wildlife get through into the field? Are they oh, absolutely. So yes, from the back of the fence, i.e. the outside of the field, there's a 1.2 metre gap for the wildlife to move around the outside. There will also be between about 50 and 80 metres, a wildlife egress exit point for each piece, as a, for, for instance, badgers and hedgehogs, they can yeah. come through the field if they wish. It's, it's completely their choice, but they do have the option to move through the field or move around the outside of the field, whatever suits them on any given day. OK, and I think Environmental Health are going to propose changes to the hours of the operation. So OK, fine. OK, you're happy with that? I just, uh, Chair, if I'm honest with you, I just want to make sure that as many people as possible can enjoy this beautiful park with us. Okay. But as long as they stick to the rules. Thank you. Um, and um, are you going to do anything with the with the stables? Are you going? To no. Now, Chair, if I can, I, we do not want to be associated with these stables because the stables were built by the previous owners without any regard to planning policy or, or process. And um, we have already offered the stables to the local Hamilton Parish Council, and we've offered the field uh, to them as well. Unfortunately, they couldn't come up with a plan of what they wanted to do with them. We even offered to remove them. Um, but they couldn't come up with a decision. So what we've done is we've worked with some of the charities with the SDMP and it's now going to be given to a adult learning disability charity, which okay. you could use that on bank holiday weekends, completely free of charge, where adults with learning disabilities can come and paint. Um, so that's been a fantastic way for us to, to, to make sure at bank holiday someone's really getting the use of it. Yes. I, I did have this, I drove past the site and I thought okay. if I was, you know, disabled or had a disabled child, why would I park up the top and then the track is already there, isn't yes. it? Yes, the there's a very simple reason for that, if yeah. I may. The, sure. the, current ex, the current entry point at the moment is incredibly dangerous. And, and the yes. reason I say that, I yes. come from an air traffic control background and I like to understand how things come in and go out very, very safely. The, the turning on the current entrance is oblique and it also has a, an entrance directly opposite. So you don't necessarily get the, a, a very easy turning circle into that particular entrance, so it simply doesn't work. And if you go around to the other side, you get a much wider splay to turn into the actual car park itself. And the current uh, users of our sister field at Home Cross Farm, uh, many, of our, many, of, many of our current customers are either, some, many of them are disabled, uh, quite a few are blind, so we did it in consult consultation with them about how would be the best way to get you from A to B, and they helped us design the path around the outside. Right. It's just it's quite a way if you're pushing a bus chair, but anyway. It is. It is. Bit. But to be fair, the, the current customers that we have either have electric wheelchairs or come with helpers. OK, right. OK, I think that's the end of my question. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair, any more questions for Councillor? Councillor Reid, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chairman. Um, hello, Mr. Campbell. Hello, Mr. Reed. It's nice to see a site that looks like it's going to be properly organised. Thank you very um, much. You, know, you said that you were going to vet the dog yes. stroke owner yep. prior to them going into the field. How do you intend to manage the field itself? Is there, uh, are they going to be given pass keys to get into the car park? So there's an airlock gate that we currently have at the moment so people can drive safely off the road stop their car so they're not on the road, open the gate, come inside. There's also a padlock with a combination key inside that all customers get access to that combination key. The reason we did that was because of a more recent phenomenon of people's dogs getting stolen. So it's a very it's a very secure area once people are inside. So not only is there that gate, but there actually is a secondary gate as well to get into the field, which is also lockable from the inside. And presumably you're going to be um, managing the waste bins on Very much so. That's professionally taken care of by a company in Chichester yeah. that, that regularly enter every Wednesday morning. The, the only thing that I'm a little concerned about sure. is the, the the road itself. Yeah. When Hamilton is closed because sure. of adverse weather, that is the road that people use. I use it quite a lot. Sure. Um, so it does generate an awful lot of traffic on occasions. Of course. So that's a very valid point, Mr. And, and we are very much lucky in that geographically we're best, we're quite blessed. We have four other entry points as well, um, from Camps Hill, East Ho Road, etc. So on the rare occasion that 
Hamilton doesn't sound really clear, doesn't seem to really close anymore since the flooding issues have been fixed. And we do have a, we do have a great dispersal plan in place to make sure that actually there are other routes that you can take. And if it got to a situation where we felt that we were causing issues on the road, then we close the park. I have got my fingers crossed with regard to Hambledon access. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. Vice Chair, any further questions? No further questions. Thank you, Chair. And thank you very um, much, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. I've got one more. Sorry. Um, when I approached the site, I, um, well, unfortunately, I came in from not from Hambledon, but from the other side. And sure. It was a very difficult journey. So I was going to. Um, suggest that you might recommend to your clients that they come in from the Hamilton end because it's much easier to get there to that field. Than That's absolutely not a problem. We can publish that. Yeah. That's not a problem. And actually, we have two entrances, so we can come around the back of Hamilton or we can come through the front of Hamilton. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's not a problem at all. Because the roads were a nightmare. They were so narrow and no passing. Well, it's, 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 well, it's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's much better than it used to be, but um, yeah, right. absolutely. We're, we're, we're fully aware of that. OK, so thank you. Um, thank you very much. That's it for uh, for you. For Absolute pleasure. Part. And uh, thank you for coming along and um, good luck with your venture. Thank you. Um, and so if you could turn your microphone and your camera off, that would be great. Thank you all um, very much indeed. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, councillors, we are looking at the questions. They start on page 198 at the bottom. And then they go on to, well, the conditions start on 201. Um, so I was going to take questions on anything. Could I first of all, um, Charlotte, just hear what the Environmental House want to recommend about um, condition three? Oh. Yeah. Um, so, they would like to lessen the hours to impact so there's less impact on the neighbours. I believe that if we match the one up the road that that might be acceptable. So their hours up the road are Monday to Friday 7 till 8 and Saturdays and Sundays 8 till 7. So that would match the sister application up the road I believe. Which hasn't had um, no fire. Could you just go through that again? So sorry. Um, no that's so fine. So, so number three is changing from seven o'clock um, Monday to Friday to eight o'clock. Eight uh, o'clock, yes, and I was going to suggest that because seven up. seems ungainly earlier. Um, or um, and then finishing and then and then on so that's Monday to Friday it's seven a.m. till eight p.m. Saturday and Sunday it's eight a.m. till seven p.m and no time on bank holidays or public holidays is what the one up the road has. Um, well, they don't have Sundays, but, but they, do, they do have Sundays. Sorry, the Hocross Fields. Oh, do the have, Hocross Fields. I thought it was the one we just. Sorry. No, sorry. The Hocross Fields does have a Sunday. Yeah. So the sister application does have a Sunday. And have you discussed that with the applicant? The applicant's happy to amend conditions for hours okay. as required or as the committee feels fit. The, the seven o'clock seems early um, for the weekend if it's going to be family picnics and things. Uh, the weekend is 8 a.m. The weekend is 8 a.m. Yeah, it, but oh, it's finished time at 7, 7 p.m. Sorry. Close at 7 p.m. Yeah. And just that if you're in the middle of a lovely summer's evening and you're having a picnic or whatever, um, it just seemed too early. But we'll see what councillors think. So that you're recommending then eight to eight to eight on um, Monday to Friday and eight to seven um, Saturdays and Sundays. And Sorry, I said Monday to Friday is seven to eight so they can get in before work. Monday, oh, so Monday to Friday, seven to eight. Saturdays right, well, and Sundays, eight to seven. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Seven o'clock, it's dark in the morning until for the quite early. I could, the I could do seven stroke sunrise if that would be better. Well, I, I, I quite like the stroke sunset, so I was thinking sunrise to sunset. But 
I was I wanted to lessen it slightly in the evenings because in the middle of summer it could be about nine ten o'clock and this is true sunrise could be five o'clock yeah exactly <laughs> they're brave getting okay, well we we'll go we we'll go with the what the environmental health recommends and then we'll talk about it okay so um members any questions No questions indicated, Chair. I, I've got a question on um, page 203, condition 12. Um, I don't think it's probably necessary, but um, because we've heard from Mr Campbell, but this is the bit about the holes and gaps for the movement of wildlife, which is very important. And that sentence starts, this may also include details of holes or gaps. And, Mr. Mr. Campbell has told us that we are going to have gaps in there, but I, I didn't feel happy with the word may. I, I just quite wanted must. Because that's I've, the point of having it. Yeah, I think we can amend that. That wouldn't be a problem. And then I was also, as you heard, going to recommend that the um, in under informatives that they they recommend their clients to come up from Hambledon because it's a less stressful journey than coming across the top. I think I, uh, I put that in the update sheet that the client's happy, the applicant's happy to yes, I know. have yeah. that. So yeah, I'll yeah. add that into the report. So we have uh, any more sorry, questions? chair. Yes, chair. Sorry, Councillor McLean. Councillor McLean. Can I just confirm we're in debate now? No, we are. I didn't think we were. No, I did say D on my question. I wanted it for debate. I beg your pardon, Councillor McLean. I missed that bit. So no, we're in questions. Have you a question? No, he doesn't. I'm sorry. It's my fault, Chair. I didn't see the D. Right. OK, but there are no questions, are there? No, we've run out of questions. So debate. Councillor McLean. Bless you, Chair. Thank you. Um, just a very quick one, really. It's on the times of opening. I think the recommendation recommendation for times of opening are spot on. They're the same as the other field. So why change something that's not broken? Yeah. Thank you. So you're for the environmental health recommendation? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. if the operators to go along with it. Same as the one up the road. Yeah. Great. Councillor Reid, Chair. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. Um, as I said during the questions to Mr Campbell, um, it's nice to come across an application where it seems to be doing everything in the correct format. Um, the only thing that is of a little concern is policy SD25, which is to promote the park principles um, of which this doesn't actually do. However, um, with this particular application site, it is far enough away, it is unseen in general from the majority of people. You've got to travel up that lane and you'll only see it if you pass the gate. Um, anywhere else you won't see it. Um, on this occasion, I think that this is a much better location, not many miles away from the last application. Um, but this one I'm prepared to go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Vice Chair, any further contributions? Um, no further debate, Chair. No. And I, I too, um, I was very impressed by uh, Mr Campbell's presentation. Um, it is a landscape led um, application. He is um, conserving and enhancing the environment of the um, South South National Park. And also I was very impressed at the bio biodiversity plan and all the extras that he's putting in. Um, and it does seem to be a very well managed um, site. Well, there's just one thing. Do we need to um, condition the closing up of the entrance next to the um, stables, which is the current entrance? But it's not going to be used, is it? It's going to be um, the one up the top. Because then we can have a hedge no. planted across it. I'm talking to Charlotte, I think. 
Hi, sorry. Um, condition 10 um, from Highway said that the existing access should be stocked up and closed um, prior to commencement of, develop, uh, commencement of development. Oh, yes, or, it does. So yeah. I believe that that would cover it. Um, OK. Um, and are we going to require extra landscaping then, rather than just leave a gap? Um, we can do, yes. I think that might be covered in, I think the applicant was going to plant a hedger anyway, but yeah. that could be possibly covered by the enhancement yeah. plan and condition seven as well, which is trees to be maintained along the boundary. Yeah, yeah. Good. OK. Chair, we have another contribution to debate. Councillor Gordon-Smith. Councillor Gordon-Smith. Sorry about that. I suddenly realised my battery was getting a bit low of, of the laptop, not just of me. Um, it, it, it was mentioned painting posts green. And in my experience, painting anything green in the landscape always makes it stand out like a sore thumb because it's never the right green. Um, it's, it's far better to paint things black, actually, and then they disappear. Anyway, sorry, a minor point. Thank you. Well, probably very important. Um, well, Mr. Campbell is listening, so. Um, oh right, uh, there's a yeah. point. Presumably, he will be um, taking your advice. I hope so. Okay. Um, so that is that it. Um, yes, Chair. Yeah. Uh, Councillor yeah. Rafael has had to leave. I'm afraid. Okay. Chair, can I, just Charlotte? Can I just? Can clarify that the hours of operation are ones I was suggesting to deal with environmental health concerns. They weren't ones that environmental health said, it was ones that I recommended to deal with the concerns. That's all. Okay. So I'm about to move to the um, the vote. And I was going to mention that the conditions on page 201, and currently we're going to have seven to eight Monday to Friday and 8 to 7 on Saturdays and Sundays and no public holidays. Is that correct, Charlotte? Sure. Yes, sorry, I hadn't yeah. realised I was muted. OK. And Vice Chair, have we finished the debate? Yes, Chair. Yes. So this um, application has been recommended for approval. Um, we have changed condition three to the hours as suggested to keep them the same with the one up the, the road in the same ownership. The um, conditions start on page 201 and go on to 203. And then I've suggested that clients be told to come in from Hambledon, but that's just an informative. Um, and that's it, I think. So uh, this has been recommended for approval. So I'll pass over to Dave for a vote. Thank you. Councillor Clear. Four. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Gordon Smith. Four. Councillor Lamy. Four. Councillor McLean. Four. Councillor Reid. Four. Councillor Raphael, I think, has left the meeting. Yes. And Councillor Rutter. Four. Thank you. That's all seven members that are present in favour, Chair. So that application is approved. Can we go straight into um, the last one? This is item number 15, TPO 2289. I can't remember whether I've said all this already. Lansdowne House, 85 Fairfield Road, Winchester. Yes, I have. I remember saying Winchester. Um, and the case officer is John Bartlett, and he has his presentation up on screen. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, Chair. And when you're ready, we're ready to listen to your presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, just to start off with some uh, background to this case, um, at the time the TPO was served, we received one uh, letter of uh, objection uh, from, from the owner. Um, 
the council uh, initially received a uh, section 211 notice for the proposed removal of the tree um, and following an assessment of the uh, of the notice uh, we um, assessed the tree using the tempo assessment and um, this was viewed as as worthy of protection and we are seeking confirmation of this TPO today. Um, just to summarise the objections, um, the, the first objection was that there were mixed messages about the conservation area status now uh, and, and the, the, the tree was used as a Christmas tree and never intended to be a garden tree. Um, that future management and maintenance was diff difficult to achieve without causing damage to buildings and structures and that there were safety concerns about the tree due to the future growth potential. Uh, in, in response to that, um, so we, we have apologised for the confusion um, re regarding uh, the conservation area status, um, uh, which came about because so did the, the tree surgeons um, uh, issued a conservation area notice to re remove the tree, not knowing that it wasn't in the conservation area. However, um, unfortunately, this wasn't um, uh, seeing that validation stage, but we we have apologised for for not seeing that. Um, but that has no bearing on on whether the tree is um, worthy of a TPO or not. It's to do with uh, public community value. Um, so the the tree has now grown to be the most most significant and prominent tree in the road, providing a good level of public visual amenity. Um, and future works um, can still be applied for within reason and uh, those works can then be carried out by a, a competent tree surgeon who will take great care in uh, carrying out those works to avoid damage and, and any other um, issues. Uh, in terms of the safety of the tree, the owner can arrange for a regular inspection regime uh, from our boriculturalist and management recommendations can then be considered um, in any uh, subsequent applications. Um, the, the tree is shown on this map, um, just located in the far corner of the garden um, uh, and is a Norway spruce. Uh, so just with some uh, views of this tree. So th this is the opposite side of the road, uh, looking from outside 82 and 80 uh, toward, towards the um, property where the tree is located. Um, this is outside 92 and 90, uh, roughly with, with the view there from, from that angle. Uh, there's a, a slightly more partial view from, from Conifer Way. Um, but that's that's to the to the rear of, of a block of flats there, but it's um, still uh, sticking out at the, at the top there. Um, but as um, this is a, this is a long uh, straight road, it's one of the more kind of urban areas in Winchester, and um, this 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 is a view from the junction with Cranworth Road. Um, the, the tree itself is close to the end with Stockbridge Road uh, in terms of the, the where it's located, but it can still be seen for quite a distance along this road and it is very prominent indeed compared to the rest of the um, urban landscape there. And uh, this is also a view um, just to the side of um, 162 uh, Stockbridge Road, um, uh, another view from it there. In terms of government guidance, um, we haven't received any agricultural technical reasons um, that that would um, justify the, the removal of this tree and no major defects have been reported or noted. Uh, and the Secretary of State's view again is the higher the immunity value of the tree, um, the greater the negative impact of the proposed works would have an immunity, the stronger the reasons uh, 
that would have to be provided for consent to, for it to be filled. And so we're recommending to confirm this TPO 2289. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and now we come to public speaking and we have um, one objector. I think, is it just Chris Elmer that's going to speak or um, is your wife going to speak as well? My honour's here as well, so um, if I forget anything, she can jump in. OK, yeah, right. So um, I, I hope this has been explained to you. So you have three minutes. When you start speaking, the clock will come onto the screen. If by any chance you are still speaking after three minutes, I'm afraid I, I have to stop you. You may finish your sentence. And then um, it could be that the um, committee have clarification questions for you. And um, Mayana, is it? Um, Mrs. Elmich can join in in the answers to those, should you wish. That's you great. Both registered. So when yeah. you're ready, you have three minutes. Um, Chair, would it be possible to ask John just to put those photos back up on the screen because they're fairly useful for yes, some yes. of our concerns? Which was a uh, one in particular uh, you wanted? One, one of the first two, John, would be really terrific if you okay. could. That, that just um, that one there is perfect. Yes. Okay. Um, so, so thank you for um, giving us the time to speak, Chair, and John, thank you for outlining the, um, uh, the, the position that you took. Um, I mean, I think the first thing that I would say is um, uh, clearly we are, uh, we are confused about why a process that started um, because um, uh, the council mistakenly thought that this tree was in a conservation area um, just carries on, you know, even though it's not in a conservation area. But I suspect we probably won't get very far with that. The second thing is in in um, uh, in paragraph 14.5 of John's report, he talks about one of the reasons why this tree is fine to take down is that it's not very close to the property uh, and that our surveyor was concerned about its proximity to the property. Now, our property is the one to the right hand side of this uh, picture um, chair, so you can see our our house and it, it would be part of the house would be damaged if that tree came towards it, but it's true that it's not right next to it. But what I think you can see is on the left hand side of that picture, um, this tree is actually it, it branches are leaning against our neighbour's property. And obviously we're very concerned that if anything happened uh, to that tree and to our neighbour's property, um, then um, you know we're worried that that would come back to us. Our next concern was over safety and I did invite John to um, uh, to come and look. Obviously, he can see the top of the tree there, but I was really keen that he came to see the bottom of the tree, which is where our concerns lie. Um, what you can't see from the photo here is that right next to that tree is a is the old boundary wall of our of our property. That that wall is in the process of collapsing and it will collapse onto this tree. So um, we don't know because we're not allowed to take this tree down. We don't know what happens when, as it surely will, that tr that wall collapses against that tree. Um, but um, but in the meantime, what we do know uh, is that tree, if it falls down, um, I think I counted the houses and put it in our concerns. Um, there are more than five houses that could be hit by that tree, including, as you can see, the one that's really very close, which is our neighbours, which is the one that we're most concerned about. In terms, finally, of the public amenity, I am um, I do understand the importance of keeping these trees and of course we were amongst those who were so keen to keep the trees uh, in station approach which is another non-conservation area urban area of Winchester where the trees were not deemed uh, of sufficient amenity value even though they are exactly as tall as this tree um, but um, we are you know we are worried with um, the safety but also um, we haven't heard the amenity value called out by any of our neighbours now. I don't know if John has spoken to any neighbours, but the only ones that we've spoken of has said this tree is ugly. It was a Christmas tree and it's been blighting their view as it's steadily grown taller. You can see it's really quite a scruffy thing on a on a street that's very street proud. Um, so um, uh, while it may have um, amenity value, I don't think it is seen by our neighbours as something that's valuable, although obviously John um, if he has spoken to anyone in the area who would speak in defence of that, um, uh, then then obviously um, then we would stand corrected. But what we do know is 
that the house, not the one that you can see on yeah, the, the one next to it. Minutes is, is that's three minutes. So yeah, OK, um, the, the, the one that is next to the house that's visible um, have said that they would love to see this tree go as it really does create an awful lot of shade for them. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. But thank you for um, coming along today. There could be questions for you from our members of the committee. Um, am I right? Because I, when I, I, I came um, and drove past it, am I right that Conifer Way was obviously built with the tree in situ? Do they seem newish properties to me? The uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, don't know. I wouldn't know, but that we think they were built in the 80s and we don't think this tree went in until the 80s. So if it was named oh. Conifer Way, it was a rather small tree. We know that it's doubled in height since those buildings have been built. Right. Um, and it so was named after the tree, wasn't it? Conifer Way was presumably it we, was we don't, off the tree. Is that, do, do you know that factually? No, no, I'm just asking you. Oh, I, I, we don't either, we, we don't know that. We can't believe it is because the tree would have been so much smaller. I mean, it would make more sense to call it Magnolia Way because the Magnolia was much bigger than the Conifer when those buildings were built. But um, yeah. Which I prefer as a name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Vice Chair, any more questions um, for Mr. Elmer? Um, could I ask a question? Yes, do. Um, have you thought about crown lifting it, um, which would be um, in, in discussion with the tree officer, even if it had a TPO, you would be allowed to maintain the tree and do things like crown lift it. So, so you know, lighten the, the burden and so on. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we, we have. Um, and, and yeah, th thank you for the suggestion. It's certainly something um, if, if we were unfortunate enough not to be able to get it removed entirely, that's certainly something that we would look at. Um, as I say, our, our concern is with the bottom of the tree and the wall there and just the reach of the thing. But but I think that would be uh, that would definitely be something we would we would apply to for if we couldn't get our our preferred route. Thank you. Any more um, con questions for Mr. Almond? No further questions, Chair. So, yes, we... Chair, yes, please. Oh, sorry, Councillor Clear. Councillor Clear. Sorry, hello, Mr. Elmet. Um, I was going to suggest crown lifting, as uh, Councillor Rutt has said, and I must admit, as I we drove into Fairfield Road. Uh, my first uh, expression was, oh, look at that lovely tree. It really stands out. And to <laughs> me, I, I love the look of it. But having heard you, um, did the tree officer, you're on about the roots and the wall. Did he, it, did you, he obviously knows about that and you've explained it to him. I'm just wondering if you did and if so, what his comments were. Um, it, the, the best, the, the, what, what, I, what I invited John to do was to come and look because I appreciate he's, he's obviously taken a lot of photos from outside and, and it gives a good sense of the tree. But what you can't see from there is that wall that's causing the problem at the bottom and, and really just this proximity to the, to the neighbours. So I invited him to come and look on the property and, and said I had some concerns over um, the, the safety, but, but he, he, he declined my invitation to, to come and see close up the tree. So I don't know what he knows uh, because he, he may have looked over the wall. I don't know, but he certainly didn't look from inside the property. OK, thank you for that. Any more questions for Mr. Elmer? No. Um, yes, I'm sorry, Chair. Um, yes. Councillor McLean. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Um, Looking at the secret of my problem with it is actually in the name of the tree, which is a Norway spruce. Um, I think it's probably, to my mind, the wrong tree in the wrong place. Um, it's Councillor Clear, you know, it really went wow when she saw it and said, oh, what a lovely tree. It is. My, my reaction to it is totally the opposite. Um, so, are you trying to try and I, I, trying to find some sort of alternative to this is if, um, I don't know if I can ask, the chair maybe will advise, tell me if I'm getting it wrong, but if you were prepared to fund a number of replacement trees somewhere else that would be 
local trees, as has just been done in, in Bishop's Rolf and my parish and is being done around the district. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that would could could throw a different light on this on this application? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Maybe you or um, legal could advise on that. And that isn't the application that we have before us, Councillor McLean. I know, but it's a question I'm asking, Chair, just to see if it throws a different light on it. But I'm just pointing out that that is something that we don't have to consider because we it isn't the application that's. OK, important. that's fine. Thank you. I asked. <laughs> Chair, am I, am I Chair, do you want me to intervene or not? Are you happy? Because you were totally correct. It's not the application before us today. It's not the application before us today. So therefore, it's yeah. not a consideration. The, 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 the one that was Catherine Knight, who's the head of uh, legal here. Oh, yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you. Uh, thank am you. I, sorry, can I just add something that that was in even though it is not the application today, when we um, spoke to John, um, one of the things we had mentioned is we would love to plant a cedar tree, a Lebanon cedar tree, which I think would be would match the Victorian aspect of our lovely house and 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 will be a much better fit um, in that place. But even though I, I do realise this is not maybe the right application, but that was suggested, that was mentioned to a, to the tree officer when we spoke to him, because we do appreciate the conifer tree implication. I, I suspect that the advice from our legal officer is going to be the same. Mm. We are not considering cedar trees, we're considering whether to confirm the TPO on this tree. Yeah. Sorry. Um, right. So, any more questions for the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elmet? No further questions, Chair. No. Thank you very much, Mr. Elmet, for uh, coming along thank and you. Um, rushing in from work. Um, obviously, you're going to stay and listen to the debate and the decision. But mm. if you could turn your microphone and your thank camera you. off. Thank you for your time. Um, John, is there anything you wish to? Um, say in the light of the contribution from the public speaker? Um, so in, in terms of the um, wants me to, to or invite me to come round, I I can only recall that um, potentially in a, a, a phone conversation. I can't I can't actually recall that too much. But um, uh, the, the the main thing is we want, wanted to make a a TPO on this tree because of its visual amenity um, and um, in terms of this uh, location this this is a very urban part of Winchester um, and it's the last remaining tree in this road um, and has has taken a number of years to grow to this height um, so there, there's there's such a, a lack of greenery in this road that um, it, it it does stick out as such a prominent green feature that's re remaining in this landscape and uh, it, it will I do believe it will be very detrimental to the landscape if this tree is is removed um, uh, non-native trees are becoming increasingly important as there are increasing uh, diseases and threats to native trees in in the in the area and, and the district um, so yeah thank you OK, um, so we've just got to the point where it's questions on, on your report. Uh, look to the vice chair to see if anyone wishes to ask you any questions. No questions, chair. And so we are into debate. We have Councillor Gordon Smith for debate, chair. Yes, I was going to start, though. Um, so sorry, Councillor Gordon Smith. And I know this tree wasn't meant um, to be because it was a Christmas tree that kept being put out, but it is. And in my view, it's a magnificent tree. I suspect um, Councillor Gordon Smith is going to disagree with that because I've heard his views on non-native trees. But, um, and as you turn into the road, Councillor Clear is quite right. It does just take you aback. It is a wonderful specimen of this tree. And um, I, I really feel that um, Conifer Way was 
was built was named after that. I don't, well, I don't know that for sure, but it is of a high value contribution to the area. There are no other trees in the street, none at all. It's just row after row of houses, and it's very prominent in the street scene. Um, I think you need to see the tree in situ. I do hope that councils have made the effort to go and have a look at it. Um, and it, as um, John has said, it is the last tree in this street. Um, I did find his note very reassuring that the chance of being killed by a falling tree is approximately one in 10 million. So that was quite reassuring to know. But um, I should obviously be voting to keep the TPO. Yeah. Councillor Gordon Smith. Yeah, um, I have to say, I mean, it is big, um, but there's always this perennial problem with people getting the scale of the tree wrong uh, around houses. You know, if you had a big Victorian park, absolutely tremendous, but in a quite a small urban garden, it's a bit of a nightmare. And um, the owner suggested planting a cedar tree. Well, again, those get those have a huge spread eventually and would be, whoever has a house in you know a hundred years time will loathe you for it but um I, I would say by all means don't put a tpo on it um and replace it with something that's of, of appropriate scale thank you any more contributions to today Yes, Chair, we have Councillor Raphael and Councillor Clear. Thank you. Councillor Raphael, I thought he'd left. Only well, for he, uh, he did leave and he came back again in time okay, for this as debate. I, as for this explained item. to you, Chair, at lunch. No, not to worry, not to worry. So, Councillor Raphael and then... Who else? Sorry. Councillor Clear, Chair, sorry. Oh, Councillor Clear. Councillor Raphael. Thank you, Chair. This, this is the wrong tree in the wrong place. They cut these things down every year and transport them to London for a Christmas tree. Get rid of it. I wouldn't like to live there, so I should be voting against TPO. Councillor Clear. Thank you, Chair. Um, I like what you said, actually, Chair, when you started to say the tree that was not meant to be. You've summed it up in that one sentence, but I think that tree should remain. I think it offers great value to the area. To me, as I drove down, it's like a beacon. It's a prominent tree in the street scene, and I support the TPO. Thank you. We also Any have Councillor McLean, Chair. Councillor McLean. Um, likewise, it's a, Nor it's, a, it's a Norway Christmas tree. Uh, it's far too big. Um, I would, certainly wouldn't want it in my back garden. Um, um, sadly, I want to vote against the officer, if I may. Thank you. Any more, Vice Chair? Um, I did see something from Councillor Reid. Councillor Reid, do you want to join in debate? Oh, thank you very much. Um, Chairman, I if the photographs are not too deceiving it does look awfully close to um, that particular property uh, the neighboring property um, all it would take is a wind to whip the tree and it could cause damage to the um, structure of the building i would hope that the officer has taken this into account um, i do like the tree um, if it's a if it's um, a Norway spruce, as you say, it's a Christmas tree, but it's one heck of a lot of lights. Um, I'm sorry, I hope that the applicant could, sorry, the officer and the property owner could come to an agreement to replace that particular specimen of tree with something a little bit more standing, because I'm not terribly sure what the uh, insurance situation would be as and when any damage is, comes to the root due to the, the wall itself. Um, I'm not sure. I think I will abstain from the actual decision on this one. It, it's too close to call. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any more contributions to debate? No more debate, Chair. So um, this TPO, TPO um, has been recommended to be confirmed. Um, and I'm going to pass over to Dave to give a roll call of members to give their decision. And um, so this is TPO 2289 to be confirmed. Dave? Yes, thank you, Chair. Councillor Clear? Four. Councillor Evans? Four. Councillor Gordon Smith? Uh, against. Councillor Laming? Four. Councillor McLean? Against. Councillor Reid? Obstain. You stupid boy. <laughs> thank Council you, Florence. Uh, yeah. Can we Councilor carry on, please? Councillor Raphael? Against. And Councillor Rutter? Four. That's four members for, three against and one abstention. So that TPO has been confirmed. Just as a reminder to the applicants, that doesn't mean that nothing can be done to that tree. Um, so um, you know, planning applications can be put in. Um, thank you very much, everybody. A really long day. I think we all deserve a medal here. Uh, I do hesitate to say, could you just stay on for a quick um, moment afterwards? Um, and thank you very much to members of the public for coming along. And if we could now ask you to leave the virtual room. And um, the, that is the end of the meeting. 5.55.